uh, recording now. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to this twelfth uh, session, which means we have been doing, uh, we have done at least twelve weeks with you, and uh, we have been doing this uh, through modern technology, Zoom, the red, the big blue button, and the model. So we have, I'm sure you have enjoyed your learning. For me, definitely, I've enjoyed my teaching. Although I don't meet with you physically, but I'm seeing you, those of you who are have been participating. I am very, very happy and excited that uh, you have been there. I hope you have also enjoyed this particular session. Now, as before I begin, there is card two that is looming. And uh, I was debating between doing it tonight or tomorrow night or doing it on Saturday so that I will have no makeups. You know, there are people who tell me I am working, Malimu, I was not able. So what would be the best way, Wanjiru, maybe you want to say something. Can we do it on Saturday or do we do it at midnight? Yes? Uh, so I think because today is the day when we usually have class, we do it tonight. Because if we say on Saturday, some will say that Saturday there are SDAs, there are religion and whatever, it will be a debate. Therefore, let's just mm. do it today, tonight. Everybody will be back from work. And we okay. it quickly from 7 to 9 and it's okay. For everyone okay for this course yes the other one were also asking me the same uh and there are people who are doing this course and the other course so they can't run concurrently because some people will be disadvantaged they will move from one to another uh, and because you open at once we can leave it open up to even uh midnight is our because it's a one hour so i can open it from seven to midnight tonight would that be all right? Hello. Yes. Are we to, together. Uh, yes. So the, the the cards will be open tonight up to midnight from seven to midnight. So anybody, once you open, you'll be in it. Do not have any opportunity to say, "Well, I was not there. This problem, that problem." Okay. Tasabasi. It is ready. The card is there, and there are those assignments you are doing. I hope you are going to be bringing them in. Uh, the, we said, say, the last class. The assignments that we brought in by today, today or next week. I think next week. That will be assignment two, eh? I've got a number of things I send you guys. And I've been marking the work I've been sending you. When I say discuss, I've been looking at them, and that all is cumulative. And somebody was asked about the exams. In this exam, we marked 50%, 50%. 50%, uh, 50%. So that's what it will mean that 50 percent uh, will will be marked from uh you see it was 70 percent for exams and 50 uh, 30 percent for cuts so cuts and participation are going to contribute 50 percent and the exam this exam that you are going to do is going to contribute 50 percent maybe if i can say here that the exam will have it has two parts it is uh, the multiple choice questions and there is the essay type of questions which will be answering, and all of them will have to come to me to contribute 50%. It's good to know that. And uh, so we'll be talking about exam, I think, uh, one of the wrap up sessions that we'll be having, even not by the end of the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, welcome to this session. This is the 12th session, uh, means we have had 12 weeks, 12 sessions so far. And today we are looking at the second, the last fall session. Any other session that will be coming will really be uh, a session probably for, uh, you may say, a session for uh, uh, for just revision. But this is the session we have. And I have here a picture, picture for the day, uh, action plan. Uh, this is interesting. Eh? When you talk of action plan, you have objectives, you have strategy, you have collaboration, you have schedule, you have a, you act, you have to check, and you have to implement. You know, when you come at strategic management, this has been a process, ladies and gentlemen, and you've seen from the beginning that strategic management is a process of looking at the future, looking at gaining competitive advantage, and looking at the survival for the future. Many organizations today have been looking at survival, you know, resilience, you know, come back. How are they going to come back in the new normal? 
which is the abnormal normal because things are not the same companies that are big even hotels and it's interesting even hotels like intercontinental one of the landmark hotels in nairobi kenya anybody who is across the globe saying i want to stay in the intercontinental hotel in nairobi they know the standards with the continental hotel these are franchise of you as you know or i want to stay in the hilton you know the hilton or i want to stay in the norfolk you know the norfolk you know Norfolk. what the other day was threatened to close even the many of the serena hotels all these are threatened you know the, the problem is what is happening covid 19 has a big toll and is yet to, yet to, to reach the end it may not reach the end it will continue but companies and businesses that are able to turn around to actually get their act together in their action plans to ensure that they survive whether with small numbers of workers but new approach in running business a new model of doing business that is what is coming up in terms of strategic management so it's real it is here today and it's going on and before i go far by the way we have a uh, we have an mba program coming up uh, just to update you your university is uh, finally finally coming up with this mba program and this Malimo, this professor sitting before you here, has been the forefront in terms of getting the curricula being done. The curricula now is at almost the last stage of finally going to the Commission for University Education. And once it goes there, we'll be able to get back feedback and we'll be able to start the first students, hopefully before the end of the year. So among you who are graduating, and you're interested in doing your master's, here is a master's that's ready for you. Master of Business Administration, MBA. And this MBA degree program is, um, I want to say, it's an innovative degree program, which I'm sure many of you will, will like, because it has, those who of you interested in doing uh, data mining and informatics, you are in ICT, you can go in data mining, MBA data mining and informatics, you can do something in that area, analytics. Or those of you who are doing strategic management, we have a whole specialization in strategic management. And we have all specialized in entrepreneurship, human resource, and so on. And accounting finance, we have specializations. So I want to tell you in advance that watch this space, your degree program, the MBA, which you have been looking for, innovative. In fact, the last stage we had was we had a team of experts who are called stakeholders from across this country. We had 20, 30 of them looking at that program it's a draft program ready and they said wow this is a true innovative program training students not just to get their degree and get the skills and knowledge oh i have an mba like anybody else across the street no this transforms your thinking it's an entrepreneurial approach of making you think critically solve problems in society uh, in business and in society and so we have two strands either you want to follow the academic line which means you want to do a doctorate degree after you do your mba you can go to the doctorate it means you have to do research rigorous research and present and defend your your your, your proposal and defend your your results and then be awarded your degree or you go through the coursework and branch towards uh, another strand which we call an executive wing whereby you want to reach we are appealing we're looking at people who are already in industry or people who feel me i don't want to go to academia but i want to do an advanced degree that gives me analytic skills to look at, identify the businesses, identify challenges, and solving them. That will go a project direction. So anyway, we'll let you know about this. But I just got to give you an announcement that your university is going places. Your university is also benchmarking with the best of the best in the, universe, in the globe and looking at how can we make our university and programs the best that can be. And that's what we're doing practically. So ladies and gentlemen, again, let's look at strategy, yeah? strategic management. And look at strategic plan and taking action to move towards that. So this picture here, I wouldn't ask you to tell me what you see, but I've just summarized what it is that taking action, doing an action plan. Strategic managers do action plans, which they call strategic plans, which I hope all of you are looking at. You are working on strategic plans of different organizations, which we had asked you to do. I saw a lot of groups. Make sure that you are a member of one of the groups because we won't mark and leave your work. So ensure those of you who have not sent your groups in, please make sure that you are in a group and you communicate with your group team because we'll soon we'll be sending you this, I think today or tomorrow. We should be sending you now. This is some of the groups. And we'll so that when you are giving us your project next week, we'll be looking at who is who and what they how they participate in the groups. So, gentlemen, with those announcements, allow me to move now to the next level. Uh, as usual, Malimo normally begins with a, uh, what we can say is 
quotation quotes from uh, prominent people in uh, uh, thinkers in society. Uh, thinkers here, one of them is Mark Zuckerberg. I'm sure some of you know Mark Zuckerberg. You may not know him as an individual, but you have seen uh, his works. Mark Zuckerberg is a founder and CEO of Facebook. He came to Kenya, I think, the last year or the other year. I thought he came to Kenya. This is the founder and CEO of Facebook, as when this was written. And this is what he said, a famous quote, eh? the biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that is changing really quickly, the only strategy that guarantees to fail is not taking risks. Ah, what does he say? The biggest risk is not taking any, any risk. Sitting there and waiting and saying, oh no, we can't do that, we may fail. No, we can't invest here. I can't apply for this job because I may be turned down. I can't seek this office to find information from this office because I'll be ashamed. They will not give me the information. After all, I am actually very, you know, I'm just a student, just finished ZTech University. I am not so sure that people know me and I don't know, know who knows who. No. The biggest mistake is not taking any, any risk. So, what do you need to do? In a world that is changing really very quickly, the only strategy that guarantees to, uh, to fail is not taking that. So you will not fa you'll fail if you don't take any risk. So move. That's what Zuckerberg did when he did the Facebook. Eh? Many of you on Facebook and so on and so forth. Malimi has not been very fun of Facebook, but uh, I read. At the end of this topic, what's our menu? We have only three course menu this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, three course menu. We look at the contemporary issues in strategic management. What are the things that are there today. What is happening in the contemporary world when you look at uh, strategic management? We discuss contemporary issues in strategic management. We analyze and appreciate the trends in strategic management. And we also analyze the challenges faced in strategic management and how they can be handled. That is our three course menu, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to say, Karibuni Tena, those of you who have just joined us, Karibuni Tena. And we say the card will be tonight. We're announcing this also. Card will be tonight, the second card, from 7 p.m. to midnight. So once you log in, you know, it will lock you out after one hour. So it's a time frame so that it allows people, even those who are working. I know some work late. They come from work at, the at 9. They reach home at 9. Like one said, Malimu, you see that 6 to 7. And uh, I'm just uh, on the way home. What do I do? We are giving them opportunity. They can even do it from 11 to 12. If they are family in the house, now you require at night, you can do your cut and so on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we've said. And we'll be sending that post very, very shortly uh, as we continue this today's class. Allah is welcome. And uh, we can continue then. Right. Before we continue, I think I should have said this. Sorry, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to ask about this. Any comments on this uh, quotation? Sometimes we go on quotations, and uh, when we talk of quotations, people feel, oh, Malimu, you just gave us a quotation. I want you to react to this quotation. What do you think about this quotation? Hmm. What is your opinion on this quotation? Quotation from Ak. Back. What's your reaction on this question on Mark Zuckerberg? What's your opinion? This is what he said. You know, if I may like it a little bit, he said this the biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that is changing really fast, quickly, the only strategy, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking any risk. What do you think about that? Are you, do you agree with that statement? When you talk about your opinion, you said, do you agree with the statement? Do you not agree with that statement? And what is, what, what is your take on that? Hmm. What is your opinion on this quotation from Mark Zuckerberg? We're talking about contemporary issues, but it's good to remember about the great thinkers. Yeah. What is your opinion on this uh, quotation? Well, let me just sip a cup, a cup of water. Members, I'm waiting. You are ready to grab your mic and say something. You say, oh, that doesn't work. I think the man was a crazy man. He started with this. Yes, Wanjiru. Oh, sir, I agree. Wanjiru. Yes, sir. 
Yes. I agree Go with uh, Mark Zuckerberg yes. because uh, in this yes. world, there's nothing yes. that you can achieve without risking because even your yes. own idea is a risk. Mm -hmm. uh, you can right. have an idea that is not yet exploited and it's a risk yes. on your side because you are not even sure if there are resources yes. to make your idea more expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, I can agree with him. Let's take risk and uh, we achieve bigger things. Yes. Thank you, Rostendor. Yes, Richard has written something here. Richard says, my comment from that quotation is always have the courage and believe in yourself. Sometimes not take risk is not worth it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Iveri. Taking risk, even in life, it's a risk. even doing these studies on uh you know using these modern gadgets and uh, uh we may say online uh, we may call it also blended learning you see even with this blended learning it was a risk the university said look we cannot just sit and say oh my we have closed the government has closed all institutions we wait until they open some did that and they are regretting because the government said look you guys universities go online we are giving you a get. Makoha, PC, as Makoha said that the other day. When the people were doubting Thomas, even parents were saying, oh, no, we wait until the university opens uh, September or when the government will open it. Let my kid you. Now they are regretting. Kids are at home. I can even kids are at home. And like you said, when you're home, you're a problem unless you are doing something. Just like I was telling your colleagues in uh, entrepreneurship class that you did. We're talking about social entrepreneurship. Look, what are you doing yourselves currently? You know, are you doing anything in the community? What are you giving the community like social entrepreneurs do? So anyway, this is another point. So in this case, then you can see that uh, taking risk, the university said we will boldly go ahead and offer learning on blended learning, blended uh, approach. And there we are here. I see some people have written a few things today. Risks makes people achieve on their goals, on their goals, yes. Goals to set up a program like this and run it and use the big blue button. Even Malimu here, who didn't know about Big Blue Button, and some of you, we are using it now. I can see you, you can see me. And if you also turn on your um, your, your mics and your your your, your, your webcams, uh, we can face each other. We're doing this. Right. Richard says, my comment from the quotation is always, have courage and believe in yourself. Sometimes not taking them. Today, risks make people achieve. Yeah, Muthia said one. Muthia said everyone, every successful people are those that take risk, especially when trying new concepts. Yes. Even Zuckerberg, when he went to Facebook, he did not know about Facebook, but he said, I start a direction, communicate with people, quick messages, and so on. Yeah, Jacqueline Marlow, yes, Jacqueline, why should you not fear to take risks? Since it strengthens individuals and its ability to achieve, yes, it strengthens your resolve, I can achieve. Russell Dobb, yes, being a risk taker is advantageous because through attempts and failure, one learns. Exactly, thank you very much. Elid Mugoyem, risk is inherent to all human beings. A person who doesn't pursue their dreams and try to need, meet the goals for fear of failure is already floating out to the sea, right? They become unable to find the courage into so, so into the, <laughs> yeah, so, right, that, go, yeah. Good Lillian, impressing, taking risk, help someone to overcome a fear of failure. Hongera, for those who are commended. The others, keep your comments coming, eh? So that we are all participating. We encourage you to participate. Ask questions, answer, comment, and so on. thank you very much. Now, so having done that, we can now move. Every successful people are those that took risk. Exactly. Where we are, the advances in science and technology that we are having was taking risk. Everything you take a risk, level risk. So begin by running, doing something. And you also, as you are finishing your program, you already completed your degree. That to me, you have. Semester is ended. You are doing exam, you pass. What next? Graduation. Hey, you graduate, and what you graduate, look for jobs. Jobs are there. Even when COVID is there, companies are still hiring. So don't say, oh my, companies are shedding of workers. Yeah, they're shedding of workers, but they're hiring also. Hiring graduates like yourself. If not, what do you do? Start something. Hey, the courses you've done should have helped you to build your repertoire, repertoire of skills and knowledge. You are, in, you are an asset in itself. So you take risk in saying, as soon as, even before you finish, right now, as you're at home and you're working on this, can I look at opportunities? What opportunities are available? Can I search? Can I do this? Am I able to make a difference in the community, even if I'm going to volunteer? Look at my community. They need ABC. Identify the social needs. 
and mobilize resources. Number one, you keep occupied. Number two, make a change. Number three, who knows? That might be a calling in your life. Because what's life? Make a change, make a difference as you run yourself. That's what it happens in life, by the way. Otherwise, if you sit there waiting, oh, you know, there are no jobs. COVID is here. It is taken off jobs. People are being laid off. You begin mourning, be mourning. You have come to university. You have the knowledge. Don't be like other graduates. This Malima expects to inspire you so that you are able to begin doing something. So taking risks is important. We don't have to spend time on that. Right. Thank you very much for your comments. Every successful people are those that took risks. Exactly. Muthia, you successful. Whatever line. I see here, Jacqueline. Yes, risk must be part of your, your planning. Exactly. Can the cut start at 5 uh, p.m. to midnight? Yeah. And start, uh, somebody said, can the cut start from what? To start at 5 to midnight. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're asking that within the question. Eh? Jacqueline, yeah. We'll open. We're thinking of opening at 7 eh? because some are traveling. You can still start at 5. Let's see. Because it's ready. We put it there. Once you enter, of course, you know this. Once you open, you have to run up to the end. Otherwise, it will lock you out after one hour. And you need to come in again, I think. Yeah. Right. So risks are there and they are taken in every step, including your own life. I wanted you to internalize Mark Zuckerberg's idea that you have to take risks in every way. Right. As we go on, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we introduce ourselves about this uh, course, this, this is a topic, which is contemporary issues. The world advances in terms of scope, scale, and speed. Uh, let me just resize this for me to read properly. Yeah. The information, the, the world advances in terms of scope, scale, and speed. Yeah, contemporary issues. What's the world? It has a lot of ad advances now in scope, in scale, and speed. The information technology industry is fast paced and demanding. Firms competing in this industry have to be continually making growth announcements to satisfy the shareholders. Yeah, companies must always be making what? Making, they must be making change. Whether it's COVID or no COVID, you must make it growing and making a difference. Contemporary strategic management encompasses both the traditional approach to strategic thinking as well as a more current view of new developments in the theory and applied management of principles. Yeah, contemporary strategic management encompasses both the traditional approach to the new strategic thinking. How do we move? A strategic issue is a fundamental policy question or a critical challenge affecting an organization's mandates, mission, values, and so on. That is strategic issue. Do we succeed? Do we expand? Do we withdraw? Do we repackage ourselves? Yesterday's news, what news? There's a company which was supplying chemicals to schools, but schools have closed, reagents and so on. What have they turned to do? In the fact, the owner was saying, look, after COVID-19, we did not send any worker home. We sat and thought about what is there in the market that we can do. Then we turned very quickly the chemical reagents to do what? To do sanitizers. One of them is like the protector. Is one of them. This type. We do sanitizers. We turn around, get the alcohol, uh, methylene, uh, whatever it is, get whatever, turn around our machines, refocus them, restructure them. We are now producing hand sanitizers. Interesting. Repackaging itself, strategic issue. You didn't see this as a problem and therefore close factor and send people home. But we said we won't. We have to look at it from another perspective, a strategy that will continue giving us a new approach. That's what they are doing. I want you to be alert, ladies and gentlemen. You are managers, all of you. Yeah, dear managers, I want you to be alert. 31 of you, 30 of you, you are the managers. This Malima has always referred you as managers because you're finished. Whatever area you are going into, you're an engineer, you're doing BSc, you're doing BSc or whatever, you're managers, you're doing business, you are. You're accountants, so you're finishing. You are. You are managers, you're right. So as we look at this, look at what is happening today. We look at the contemporary issues. Somebody's uh, Atieno Angonga. Do you want to say something, Atieno? Because I can see you are a, or we mute you. Mute, please, if you are not saying something. Yeah? So we are saying today, the companies, Organizer corporates are looking, entrepreneurs are looking at how do we handle what's happening in the wake of the devastating effect of COVID-19. 
In fact, you be allowed really the purpose and saying, what is happening? What is new now that we see? Yeah, All right? Then, of course, as we go along, we want to look at what are the contemporary issues? Again, here, we're just in the introductory stage. What are they? Looking at the history of strategic management. First of all, they what? So put on my glasses here. The evolution of business strategy can be grouped into six decades from 1960s to the 2000, to 2010. Look at the a little history of when we talk of content, we look at issues today, but they have their history in terms of what has been happening. So very quickly, in the 1960s, during the 60s, these earlier strategy for docu documents were essentially financial budgeting oriented. We look at budgeting as a way of strategy. You know, and eventually became part of separate business function from accounting, marketing, and so on. The value system within organizations was one of meeting the budget. In the 60s, the strategy was can we meet the budget? Corporate planners were employed to help coordinate decisions and maintain control. Such a system evolved into making multi-year forecasts and predictions. In the 70s, during the 70s, organizations developed scientific approaches that is led to the creation of corporate planning departments. Again, here you can see MBA degree becomes a very, very vital one. Although it started as a small, I mean, business degrees really became now vital here, whereby you are looking at corporate planning and look at where are we going as an organization. I thought I said the next slide. Let's get back a little bit. Mm. Something. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Next slide. I'm stuck with my slides a little bit here. This more hitch here. You're not clear, sir. So, oh, I'm not clear. I think there's some hitch here in my slides. Mm-hmm. Yep, it has come. Slide has come. It was just taking time. Okay, contemporary issues. I was just looking at contemporary issues. Ipale, are we hearing now? This open new possibility. Yes. Are we clear now? If we are clear, yes. We are looking at now the eighties. Yes, it's are okay. We clear? It's okay, sir. Yeah. Right. In the eighties, we are looking at a strategies. Strategic planning began to fall from grace. Aha, uh -huh. it began to fall from grace by Michael Porter's influence grew. And we talked about Michael Porter in the last, I think, slides. So the next is became famous for the Porterian view of the world. Michael Porter looked at it. For CEOs, the failure diversification strategies together with shocks industry led to a great and business structure. What are we saying? We're looking at whatever we do here has the American approach in thinking, the American approach in terms of our history, really, in the corporate world, is the American approach that uh, has been there and European, the northern, northern, you may talk about American European approach in terms of history of management. So the 80s looked at this competitive advantage. Of course, we African countries and developing countries are takers of the technology and the approach because of the multinationals. Then the 90s, what happened in the 90s? Internal resources and capability were also seen as potential sources of differential uh, between uh, the capabilities. There you are talking of competitive advantage, and in the 90s you are looking at internal sources. Researchers began asking the fresh question such as, why do some firms outperform others? Now research comes in here to inform the question of strategic management. Why are the farmers, uh, businesses doing better? 
the challenge of the previous exaggerated view of the impact of industry on the farm's performance. Now, you're looking, you're challenging what was existing. What is the thinking? We're still looking at the development of contemporary issues in a nutshell. Then, of course, as we look at uh, what was happening, the year 2000, the contemporary issues in the beginning of the third millennium, that's they call the third millennium, the optional strategy is geared towards radical change and creating a new future. Companies were looking at a new future. Are we okay in the connection? Are we all right, members? I see Mbutia said, check my connection. Are we okay? Yes. So you're looking at it the year 2000s. In the year 2000s, right, what's happening here is a radical change in creating a new future. Even today, a new future. Thank you. There's also a new future in today. New future. And then, of course, in the 20s, in the 10s, the 2010s and onwards, will the financial crisis in the Western world of subsequent global economic downturn beginning to new norm, normal. Now, even now, we are going to another new normal. With the COVID-19, there is also the new normal, characterized by fundamental changes in the use of leverage trajectory of globalization, nature of consumption patterns, and appetite for, yeah, consumption patterns have changed now. Consumers are consuming less of other products compared to others. So we are changing even now there's a new normal. The new normal represents a return to old-fashioned business values of using leverage, judicial, watching, cash flow, regardless. Of this is what's happening even now. You know, the new downturn in the 2020s, fortunately. That's where we are. And then, of course, as we go along, uh, contemporary, the third one here is three, Strategy remains a CEO's tool to sustain and grow business value. In his book, The Future of Management, Breen and Hamel, 2007, the author laments that the management paradigm of the last century centered on control and efficiency, which no longer suffices. Control and efficiency. And even when you go to um, what we call in, in change management, what we call the, um, we are looking at controlling and managing theater quality management whereby they were talking of control and efficiency today it has changed the world has gone into adaptability and creativity to dr drive business even in the years that we are in today uh, let me see if i can share my uh, yes so that we can we can see each other here yeah what we're saying here is is that in the in the in, as we continue now we are moving away the world has moved away from controlling and efficiency to adaptability and creativity. Of course, we have not left out efficiency, but we're adapting and creativity. That's what companies are doing today with the COVID-19. To be competitive in the future, organizations must reinvent management with efforts to remove the toxic effects of traditional management beliefs. Today, we companies have to reinvent themselves. I talked about the Intercontinental Hotel. Today, they have to repackage itself. Of course, they are closing. They have already sent signals that they are closing and they have sent letters to the workers. But this is an iconic hotel globally. We did close. No for course, but the government came in and interfered in the wind. So companies have to rethink. People are no longer going to hotels. So if you are in the hotel industry, you have to rethink. The Maasai Mara, for example, we used to have a lot of tourists coming to Kenya. These companies that are are there organizations like the, the the cottages the villages those those organizations that are running those uh, uh, facilities out there they have to repackage themselves in fact there was a feature yes in one of them they look at one of the community best uh, uh, tourism structure and this community team said look we are surviving beyond COVID. hotels are here we have our lodges here community run and organized we are no longer getting tourists but we have to refocus on keeping we have never sent away workers our employees we have rechanneled them to do other things what are they doing in fact this community best uh, run uh, 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 lodge has had diversified they have cattle raising cattle beef cattle banana type that don't have disease and less disease, they are affected less by disease. They have the farming, they are doing other things. And so they are occupied into other activities. That's where they've channeled their workers, repackage themselves. The organization must reinvent management. So the manager himself was saying, look, we never send anybody home. 
we have channeled them into doing other things. Like the company is making these, uh, I said, these uh, hand sanitizers. Never send anybody home. But rethinking. The new norm is rethinking. So when you look at contemporary issues, there are issues that are outside the organization. If you look at pastel model, we talked about the political, we talked about the economic, we talked about uh, uh, social, we talked about technological, we talked about environmental and legal. Now, when you look at those coming to play, political, yes, political has come in because political has leading the country, the economic, yes, because the social, yes, so how do you handle it? Management have to rethink. That's what it says here. Radical principles will need to become part of every company's management DNA. Wow. The DNA is what makes the fabric of life. You have different DNAs. We think differently. We do things differently. Companies must rethink that way. With a with a well grappling with the many issues that are happening, COVID and uh, post-COVID effects. That's what is happening. CEOs, their dream teams must select the right path for their organization. Exactly. And I would proudly use our own university, your own university here. The CEO is the VC and his team, the DVCs and COO, you know, working with the management, the top organ decision making organ the university, the think tank, are actually rethinking. First of all, coming up with approach of saying we use blended learning, looking at other universities across the globe. We went the path of blended learning because the university face to face has been closed. Now blended learning, we improve this. We get our clients who are our students, we reorient them, we give them orientation, we get their sponsors and we inform them what we're doing. And we start a new program where we study by blended learning. That's what we're doing. So we're talking of the CEOs with the dream teams have come and select the right path for the organizations. That's what is happening. The government is supporting it now. Minister the other saying, go ahead, go ahead and offer blended learning, online learning. Make sure that only that you improve the quality. Make sure the quality is there, which we are trying, we are doing. All the day, that's what we're doing by communicating to you and seeking your advice, seeking your opinions, and so on. And then even virtual exam, even examinations, online exams, we have done that without fear. We didn't take it, we, we did we, we, we did risk, but we saw it's worked very well because it's worked elsewhere. And even graduation, you saw even the minister himself, the CS said, Look, I like that. Go ahead carry out virtual graduation so that what at the end of the day students are not stuck saying oh we have stuck because we can't have physical no and even attend the edge of the one he said he was attend the edge of the one in the person you can't see what's happening so the ceos have to rethink the dream teams which are management teams and so on are thinking of how best to be able to grapple with issues as you continue with strategic management these are issues that are happening today and I'm proud to say, must share with the university that's going. I'm also telling you, you should be proud of your university. Telling others with us, what? We'll be graduating. Those of you who are 42, we'll be graduating. And we'll graduate so soon. And we'll become the job market. If the jobs are not there, we repackage ourselves and do other things. This is the kind of thing we encourage you to do because your university's motto is invent your future. So I believe all of you are inventing your future as we go along this road. So we talk of strategy management in terms of. Contemporary issues are issues that are outside the control of the organization, but can repackage themselves. Contemporary issues here, traditionally, strategic management has been the playground for only senior managers and leadership positions. Over the years, with the dissolving boundaries and disappearing hierarchies in organizations, they are increasingly becoming flatter uh -huh, structures, strategic management and uh, structures, strategic management and leadership have undergone a huge change. True. What is happening today is if you look at the organization structure, whereby you have the tall organization from the top management, you know, then you come to the senior middle, uh, the top management, then the senior, then the senior most, and then you come down as you continue up to the time of reaching the workers on the ground. Now, these organizations have, are becoming flatter because what's happening is that you are picking ideas from everybody. The organization is learning, it's a learning organization where you are involving everybody in the university. For decision making, for example, we involve everybody. Give us your opinion. What do you think? And the workers, the lecturers, the non teaching staff, the senior scholars in the university, the senior managers. Can we bring together our ideas? How do we move the university? People in admissions, people in finance, people in admission, uh, people in the uh, grounds, people in the estate management of the estate of the university. How are we moving forward? 
This is the kind of thing that we are saying over the years. These boundaries have disappeared. And more so, they have been accelerated by COVID-19 impact. Four decades later, empirical studies will still demonstrate that strategic planning remains a deeply embedded one in organizations. We have strategic planning there. We are following our strategic plan, but we have accelerated a lot of that. Things that we would be doing in the future in terms of uh, e-learning, online learning, we have now brought it forward and we are using it now. So there's rethinking in the strategic plan. Since in earlier days, strategic planning approaches were preoccupied with economic and planning performance perspectives, and they have changed now. We are now looking at new strategies and so on. So we look at what are the contemporary issues. Now, some of the key, some of the key trends that are shaping tomorrow include this. They include organizational success. They include globalization. They include changing business product models, production models, collaborative economy. We are now moving to collaboration. If I may just, I'll be mentioning more about this. We are dealing with e-business, e-learning, digital strategy. Yes, when the digital school, these programs are under Zida Digital School. Internet of Things, yes, come in. The Internet of Things, we mentioned this last time, I think in one of the, yeah, mentioned the Internet of Things. What's happened, the connectivity of all these uh, uh, functions? Strategic thinking comes in now. We're all on the mode of strategic thinkers. And then combining dispersed personnel into a single function. Yes, dispersed personnel, workers. We are now working at home. I'm working in my own office here in Eldoret, my house. One of the rooms converted to an office, and I can enjoy the breeze out there and see the maze growing, and I'm teaching. You know, you, wherever you are also, you are in your house. Somewhere seated outside there, probably with your gadget, listening to Malimo and connecting with the others. Isn't that interesting? Shadrach, I see Shadrach is on, online here. Shadrach, you want to say something? Don't mute quickly, my friend. Yeah? Yeah? So you can see now, com in the, in the, you see combining this past puzzle, we are together, working together. Our meetings are with the university, management. Like yesterday, Tuesday, we had management. The whole morning, in the evening, I had a meeting talking about university, moving the university to the next level, benchmarking. Uh, we have actually interconnected. Innovating from the bottom of the pyramid, yes, innovation, from the level that you are looking at the bottom of the pyramid, actually look at the lowest workers. Innovation from the lowest level. How do we innovate so that it reaches up there? The innovation approaches that we're doing. All these things are things that shape tomorrow's, which is today. Tomorrow begins today. We are looking at the trends today in organization, institutions, and so on. These are things that are shaping us. So, are there other things, other trends? Probably, may I ask a question here? Any other trends? Can you identify any other trends? Can you identify any other events, any other uh, trends that are shaping the way of strategy management. Management, let me hear from you guys. Can you identify some of this? Ooh, question mark there. Management, in true here, management, uh, shaping strategic management. Can you identify any other trends that are shaping strategic management? I send this strategic, uh, strategy, not strategy, but strategic, strategy management today can you identify can you identify any other trends that are shaping strategy management today and the future these are some of the common ones organization succession succession planning globalization changing business models you know collaboration e-business can we identify any anybody can grab the mic and speak malim is here listening just sipping a cup of water here Mm. Are there any? Yes. Members, I want to hear from you. Mm. Can I hear something? Is there Brian or more? Brian, Brian, can you say something, Brian, Brian? Can I hear you, Brian, Brian? Brian or Mondi? Yes, Brian? Mm. I see here. Richard DeRuery has said infrastructure like expanding buildings. Yes. What is happening with infrastructure? Are we building infrastructure or are we reducing them? Okay, but that's okay in the normal, normal, yes. Integration of business processes, yes. Hello, Jacqueline Omoko. Jacqueline, you want to say something? 
The early integration of business process, yes. Competition, Shambua. Right, competition is there. That is, I think, a trend. It's stiff competition. They have a business and transparency. Some of the trends taking place. Any others? I'm waiting for one which is very crucial here. Mm. Who are we looking at today? Eh? Can you think about personnel? What sort of personnel are we looking for? Jacqueline Mwalo, do you want to say something as you type? Jacqueline? Oh, if I get into business and transparency, this one, there's something I'm waiting for to hear from you, read from you. Strength, stronger management, yes. What else? Stronger management, yeah. That means you need more stronger management. There's something about the workers of today and tomorrow. What sort of workers do we require? Hmm. And I hear, do stand up. You want to say something? Yeah. Or Brian Omondi, are we there? Or Atieno, I can see you have uh, muted. And Siche uh, Mgeno, Eliud Mugoy, you have started to say something. Skill labor, yes. Skill workers, yes. What about your rest on top, yes. Uh, on the side of the labor, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, as time goes by, We'll only require very, very skilled personnel in different areas because diversification mm. uh, is key in the competitive world now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, can we talk about knowledge workers? Yeah? Knowledge workers are a key. Right. That's what will be required. Knowledge workers. People who are able to... Uh, identify and find solutions people with the it workers who are uh, really the the they used to call them dot com at one time they are calling them now knowledge the e-workers with a lot of offering solutions you know in terms of technology thank you margin of amalgamation societal influence right so these are some of the things that are shaping the trends and some of the things you have indicated here uh, members let's go on and uh, now peel out one by after another. We talk about organization success. Porter, in 1980, generic strategies, talked about generic strategies, the main score topic was supported with SWOT analysis together with the Porter's five forces. This is one of the five forces. In the measure of the desired strategy may not lead to organization success as such. CEOs of profit making organizations tend to focus on growth, profitability, and shareholder value while individuals focus on on personal, pro, personal productivity, personnel, family, succession, family businesses, you see that, and networks. Enterprise will be stronger with strong dynamic capabilities already intensely through enterprise. Now, the question of intensely con entrepreneurial approach is coming in. That the future has that message below. Let me read the messages here. Marginal amalgamization, use of P procurement coming in, continuous professional learning, exactly. That's what is coming. The organization adapt to business ecosystems by using innovation and by collaboration. Key things, innovation and collaboration are key that we see happening now. And as we go along, globalization. The first item was globalization. Now, one of the items of globalization. Now, when we look at globalization, what do we mean? This is one of the items or one of those trends that is going to affect businesses in terms of uh, the current views. Managers often cite growth as a desirable goal for their firm. Growth enables increasing economic scale of, of scope, uh, scale and scope of operation. They, they, they look at gold for the firm. So you should look beyond, and as you scale up and scope of your operations, you are looking beyond the boundaries. An organization operates beyond the initial markets that are soon faced with additional levels of complexity. So globalization brings in new complexities, so the trends are, as you go look globalization, selling products across your borders, you are looking at complexities that are going to come in. Globalization is driving force that has changed the business landscape, requires you to adopt new practices, develop new capabilities, and enhance competitiveness. Yeah. To enhance competitiveness, yeah, you are talking about now even certifications that are required, like Euro Cup for agriculture, like ISO 9000 series for various production and processes, 
you have this like universities now when your universities they say i should certify nine thousand yeah there's through 15 to the 15. you see all these are coming in because you have to look at quality and standards as political and economic reforms technological change population growth and urbanization bring nations closer together this remains a goal for countless organizations of all sizes benefits and have led to sharing of wealth and so on and so forth so you look at political as you look at the globalization you look at the we talked about pastel political and economic systems and urbanization and technology comes in it's here change it changes what you are doing so when you talk of globalization in terms of trends this is where strategic management is going to be looking at can we look at the political reforms for example in dr congo this is our market or western west africa what's happening in west africa is our market or europe for that matter what are they looking for so how are the political situation europe tend to be more stable although the uh, brexit left uh, britain left but they have not really gone how is europe how is the market how is america Agoa now you look at Agoa, the renewal ago you can see our kenyan government signed an agreement which the other countries in the east Africa are saying no you are again signing a, a bilateral you know why it uh, signing a bilateral agreement with america when we are all together commerce and all of us are, uh, are together the case said no this does not stop a country from signing a bilateral another country seeking for ways of markets with their products and even their technology these are the kind of things that are happening so you see this is happening the political coming in here the political goodwill in the u.s okay. uh, of course uh, you realize that uh, trump has his own trumping the trumpet and so on and so on the kenya here we want to continue our goal they renew their goal this african op growth opportunity uh, you know policy to allow kenyan products to certain products go to america and this kind of thing happening and you can see Ke uh, kenya also and europe and america and uh, what and uk uk uh, uk Okay, having broken away from Europe, the European Union, seeking new friends in Africa and also Kenya. So you see all these things are happening in terms of the political, in terms of the economic, technology coming in here, and so on and growth. These are things that are affecting uh, trends that we see today. Uh, when we look at uh, globalization, changing business product more, you know, this is another one that you're changing. But before we do that, when we look at globalization, Globalization is one of the trends. And I want to pose a question here. What are the uh, pitfalls? Pitfalls in globalization. Pitfall means it includes the negatives. When you look at globalization as a trend, what are some of the pitfalls in globalization? What are some of them? Companies dealing business across the globe. What are some of the pitfalls? You may talk about challenges. We've talked about challenges and pitfalls. What are the negatives of globalization? Pitfalls of globalization. Yeah, what are they? What are those some of those things? What are the challenges? Uh, Felicitas, you are just repeating what I said. What are the challenges of globalization? Not challenges, but what are the negatives? globalization yeah Rostendorp? uh different countries have different legal stands therefore yes. if my if i make my company global mm -hmm. and the product i am producing maybe in kenya in another country is not legal therefore it's going to mm -hmm. limit me mm -hmm. uh therefore it's a pitfall because before making my company global i really need to know the other country its legal status so mm. that it cannot be a drawback on my side mm -hmm. okay yes. very good right that's that's good good contribution yes any others i see uh, uh, any others currency issues changing technology and so on any others anybody wants to say something grab the mic please and say something thank you rostendorp yep Jacqueline Amoke, can you say something? When you talk of currency issues, what do you mean exactly? Jacqueline Amoke. Yeah? Currency issues. Yes. I when yeah. uh, now you are trading in the USA mm. and you are in Kenya, mm -hmm. you know the way that 
by the dollar and the Kenya shilling sometimes are, are weaker. The dollar is higher, the Kenya shilling is weaker. Yeah. So sometimes it brings disputes, especially when the contract was signed mm. with the value, uh, with the amount which uh, uh, it was quoted on the on the contract. Yes. So when the currency fluctuates, yeah, it affects the business. Yeah, they become expensive, eh? Yes. Yeah, importers, imports become more expensive and so on and so forth. The currency fluctuations is a problem, right? Especially in COVID-19. Yes. Imports and low import and export laws may not may not. Can you say something more than that? Eh? I can see they're talking of terrorism with your cars globally. Yes. It's a it's a pit, it's a yes. It's one side even a global pandemic, corona, exactly. Now, corona has a big, big effect, as you say here. Somebody has a low, uh, yes, barrier, language barrier, exploitation, uh, workers in foreign country, and laws of uh, cultural identity. Yeah, that comes in. The social part of it, you're touching the social part of it. That there is lots of that, like you workers are mistreated or, or underpaid and things like those. You've seen what has happened in Corona 19. Yes. Any others? Another contribution, I see their culture, exploitation. is another one. When you look at this globalization, dynamic change in technology, so okay. When you look at globalization and look at, I think at the beginning or somewhere in the middle of this course, we talked about global trade, imports from for various countries. 70% of global trade is coming from China. 70%. Yes, what are you saying? Uh, you saying something, Jacqueline? Jacqueline, why are you saying something? Or you are talking to someone else? <laughs> okay, so what we're saying here is that, um, yes, Jacqueline, you want to say something? No, no. Yeah, in line with what's happening today, when you look at 70% of world trade, actually has links with China. That tells you that the world is vulnerable. When it comes to COVID-19, the world was almost coming to a standstill because products are manufactured in China. Companies are incorporated in the US, UK, the Bahamas, the other countries out there, but they are actually manufacturing plants in China. So when China locks down, it means you are locking down 70% of world trade. Can you imagine 70% of world trade? Just an unfortunate scene yesterday in Beirut, if you have been following news, which I believe as managers, which I challenge you as managers, you should be, you should be actually a global citizen in terms of knowing what's happening. You may not know the details aside, but you may know what are the key events happening today besides COVID-19. What else is happening? What happened in Beirut yesterday? They have lost over 200 people because of some explosions as a result of poorly uh, stored chemicals, sulfate, nitrate sulfate or something, which was poorly kept, tons, yeah? thousands of tons, which are kept poorly, and the fire ignited somewhere, either accidental or whatever. And the whole of the port of Beirut is down in ashes. If you watch some of these international channels, you see that. And some of the comments were this, all our grains were storage grains. All our products we import come through Beirut port. Now Beirut port is no go zone because this explosion has reduced Beirut port almost to ashes. God forbid, if you look at ports like our own ports, if they were reduced to ashes, what happens? All imports coming by 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 sea, you see, not all. Ninety nine percent of the imports, ninety nine point nine, come from the sea, and our ports are vital. So this destruction, the port of Beirut, by those those explosives, have rendered the country almost to its knees, up to its knees. Because all the foodstuffs, all the medicals, the doctors, in fact, in one of the hospitals, one day, a doctor said, now we are devastated because even our medicine comes through the sea. So they destroyed. They, we have storage facilities along on the, on the Beirut, on the, 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 the port, all that greens and so on. So the country is brought to its knees. What am I saying here? 
globalization trend you see across the globe. So when China closes down, so I was talking of China closing down, it means trade suffers. So one of the pitfalls of it, globalization is that overdependence on imports, and that makes them a problem because if you are locked out, then your economy comes to a standstill, and you can see the ripple effects in terms of the population and so forth. Anyway, so just touching on that, as we go on, changing business production mode is another one. The production mode has changed. So globalization, before we come to this, looks at really the world trade. We depend so much on imports that to the extent that if they were to cut off the imports, we'd be on our knees. And I like uh, when one of the our presidents, our leaders in this country, President Moy, at one stage, of course, he said, with the world trade or no trade, we can continue in Kenya. I think there was a problem politically and so on. And uh, there were countries that were saying we cannot do business in Kenya. And the president said, look, we'll go ahead. Well, people not die. There's food, there's food, they grow food, and so on we can do. And for, for about three years, there was that standoff. And the country did not really it slowed down a little bit, but it continued because the resolve was we can do less with imports and do much more internally. Anyway, this is a story for another day. So what we're saying is globalization is only impact. Now coming to changing business model here. Business models continue to evolve as companies react to changes. The changes large and small and as they reposition to avoid emerging risks and seize opportunities now this is what is, we see currently with the, the impact of covid that companies have come up with new models new approach in terms of the product line new approach in terms of processing new approach in terms of restructuring new approach in many areas yesterday for example I went to my bank, I not been to the bank, uh, to that banking hall for a number of years. My local branch here, Standard Bank. I used to be seeing tellers, you see? Tellers on a line. The teller is here, or each one in their, their own booth, of course. Teller one, teller two, three, on the different booths. So you line up to get your service and so on. Of course, they, what was happening is that we still had ATM. But today they have asked the customers, come, and we, we digitalize your, your account. All customers have been asked to go and digitalize. What does that mean? It means I can do my transaction here in my house, in my office, take money from my account, move it to my M-Pesa, M-Pesa I transfer it to someone else in Kisumu or someone else in Nairobi or someone else in Kitale. And the same thing can happen. They can also do the same and transfer money to me. And when my money is my M-Pesa, I can move it to the bank. Wow, interesting, eh? Digitalization. That's a new norm that is coming now, changing business model. No longer are we going to go to the tellers there where you have tellers, a large number of tellers there serving customers. No more. COVID has said no. No distancing now comes in. Face to face, no meeting. Number two, no congregations. In fact, this fellow was telling me, helping us in Malibu. Uh, I know you come to the bank quite a number of times sometimes. And what we are doing, we want to help you. Don't come to the bank. We are digitalizing. And we are doing this for all customers so that they don't come here. You sit wherever you are in your car outside there, your park, or you are enjoying your crops out there. As you see your maize growing, as I'm doing now, I'm seeing my maize outside there growing in the town, of course. There's a little garden here. Uh, you can do the transactions. I said, oh, good. That's great. So a new model has come in because of this you can see trends so the bank the tellers are not there anymore actually they are there but it's only one the service now is atm they have increased atm machines out there of course the sanitization and uh, there is customer care here which is now more robust customer care you know they have all what they call crm also customer relations manager whereby they manage your, your account without you going there this is now the new norm a new production line the trends that have been accelerated by what COVID-19. Over time, these accruing changes can transform everything about the business model. That is how the business invests, how it earns its distribution profits. And how, yeah, how it invests, distributes profits. This is what is happening today, changing business model. Even the university model of running the institution, now we have changed our approach, our model. We no longer have physical classrooms. Of course, when we open, we'll come back. But before we do that, now, and many of us may not go back to those classrooms anymore. Because changes are coming in. Who knows this COVID might continue? 
and as I say, sorry to say this, the World Health Organization, even the vaccine they are trying, vaccines that are on trial stage, there are quite a number of them, there are many pharmaceutical companies that have invested millions of dollars trying to come with the vaccine. And that company that will come with the most effective, efficient vaccine will reap billions and trillions of dollars. But they said, while the health organization, it is difficult to come up with that vaccine. Why? Because there is a new wave of reinfection. After a person has been infected, they go through quarantine, or quarantine and they are, they are treated, they are okay. Some of them get reinfected. So it's changing. So it may not be very easy to get what? A true vaccine. And for that matter then, the norm remains the norm. Distancing will remain with us here. Learning using uh, uh, Moodle, and, uh, using Zoom, and using uh, Google, whatever it is, would continue. It will only be perfected as we go along. So we have a new business model whereby we're delivering our services through a new approach that is happening globally. All universities are doing the same thing now. I mean, most universities that are progressive are doing that exactly. Overseas universities, they say they are not opening. In fact, some of them, like Harvard University, they were not opening. See, they have at MIT, one of those universities. They are not opening face to face until January. They say that in June. So Cambridge, the same thing. All these universities you talk about have moved away from face to face. So a new model of delivery, a new model of graduation. You know, who knew about this virtual graduation? Virtual graduation was done only by universities overseas and the people sneered at this, you know, you need to march it down there with your gown and you hear the speech from the various speakers, including the chancellor, things like those. Today, that has changed. You can graduate in your own room. You are there listening. They read your name there. The deans will be there. Reading. And even the deans reading the names will be reading from their own houses. They don't have to be physically in the university. They will have the names here. I'm reading. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir. Uh, these, are the, the gradu these are the students who uh, graduates, who, I mean, students who qualified for exams. And uh, they are presenting them to be presented for the degree of this. I'm reading names here. And the chancellor is there. And then the chancellor may rise wherever they are. There we can see him physically and say, I confer you this degree, the power to read. You know, new model of doing things. Isn't it cool, ladies and gentlemen? So people have to think differently. Although some students say, oh, the other day, you know, I've waited for long. I want to wear that gown. You can wear the gown in your room. You don't have to go to these congregations now anymore. Although now there will be no need of a gown. Gown was addressing for people who are congregating and marching. But now there's no matching because of the new model. Well, I'm just giving an example of the new model. We hope things will be normal anyway, but this is what it is. The most obvious changes are the way the business will sell to the customers and the way customers buy. In both businesses to business, business to business, business to customers, you know, B2B, 2B, 2 to 2, 2 to 2, or B2B, and then B2C. All these are not changing way. And we see it in the education sector more clearly. Even the shopping, the shopping now, some supermarkets will close. We had a big hall there now where you have people coming to walk by and so on. No longer will you need that because you don't have many people. You are paying so much rent for the space and people are, not, are now buying online. What you need to do is invest on your online uh, on the e, um, e, uh, uh, a list of products that you are selling. That's what you need to invest in, catalog. The e-catalog, where I can go in there and say, I want rice, I want the spaghetti, I want the cooking oil, I want this stuff and that stuff and that stuff. And I just stick them in my, you know, in my room, I'm just sticking them, putting them on my cart, you know, and uh, submitting. When I submit, I get uh, feedback saying, look, your amount you need to pay is uh, maybe 200, uh, 2,000 shillings. Yes. Oh. I say, yes, you tick 200 shillings. Uh, I mean, 2,000 shillings. You go again to your... Um, you know, e-banking, you get the 200 shillings, the 2,000 shillings, you move it to the bank, this account, you do that. And once you do that, what happens at the end of the day? At the end of the day, when you do that, yeah? It's cool, isn't it? This is what's happening today. The gap there we see of now going, traveling, going back to, this, to the market, supermarket, buying this or to the bank, get to withdraw the money, take the money with you, go to line up in the supermarket where there are chance of being infected because of many people, the government has discouraged this. You sit in a room and do this. And then once you do that, they deliver. They then deliver the system. They have now the picky picky, the border borders are now confirmed, changed. 
They are not changing about delivery. We deliver products anywhere. You need to advertise that, of course. So your products are delivered to your doorstep. You hear somebody ringing the bell or knocking or hooting at the gate. Please, I'm delivering your product. Sign for me because I have to take this back to the, 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 the seller so that to show that I've delivered them. Cool. Beautiful, isn't it? So this is a norm, ladies and gentlemen. So business to business, business to customer. These are changing business model because of what? The trends accelerated by COVID-19. And anyway, they, these trends were there. They were not coming, they were there. Even the question of you, uh, if you are going to the supermarket, somebody taking you around, no, there are nobody. In the supermarkets open, there's only one assistant there probably who sits up there to just watch. You come in, of course, you have your credit card, you get your card, you move around the products, you pick them, you put on your card, you go to a pay point, you 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 pay you you actually uh, pass the, the, the products through a machine reader who reads the, the barcodes, the records, and then it gives you the bill, and then you use your your card, you swipe your card, it deducts the money directly from your account, and you get your receipt, you get your goods, you pack them in your bag, and you walk away. Nobody's, you don't interact with anybody. <laughs> very interesting. That's what's happening in the Western world, by the way. Very, very interesting. Technology, trends changing. And the COVID-19 has made it much faster. So we talk about that in terms of business to business models, changing models. Are there any comments on the changing business models? Any, any examples of changing business models from your experience yes gentlemen i'm sending you this give us any any examples of changing business models from your experience yes give us some i'm here i've given you examples of how businesses are changing supermarkets you know and so on and i gave you another one of your yeah, supermarkets bakers basically what about others can we hear from you guys yeah yes see roston thank you very much for being fast Roston, yes. Uh, most businesses are using open office layout to save on spaces. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Open, yes. Where there is fiscal space, yes. Right, mm -hmm. that's a good one, yes. Uh, Jacqueline? Jacqueline, you are on and you switch it over. Eh? Any other person? Yeah? What are some of these? Space, open space now. In fact, that's what's happening. Whereby distancing also. Mm -hmm. Any others? Any other examples, please? Anybody grab your mic would, and tell Malimu? Yes. I would talk of yes. the new design of, of the structures that, that is nowadays appearing in the in the in the places you get. The design yes. is yes. that can accommodate like uh, three institution in one building. Okay. Uh, the design is, is, is more done. Okay. Compared to the old one. Okay. The design of buildings and structures that can operate more organizations. Yes. Thank you. Any others? I see a Sinja Nelly. Sinja. Blockchain technology. Yes. That is. That is right. Yeah. Anything else? And to hear from you guys any other challenge any other changing business model transport what happens is transport any others communication what's happening how about communication paypal thank you very much Elin Mugoy. Paypal, the online payment service that is today he's it's here but it's not and being accepted more what about the conferencing? Can you see conferencing? Isn't it a new approach? No longer you. Board meetings. Can you see that? Hello. Conferencing. Yes. What, what about yeah. the way banks are putting I would, I would say, so yeah. to retain their customers? Yes. And the way they put uh, technologies where they put receipts, where they call out people. So there's yes. like a certain management of people and that's yeah. enable customer to be able to continue using their services right yes that's a new model a new business to customer models yes much uh, 
Ipalei, do you want to say something? Ipalei, virtual meeting for communication, yes? Ipalei. Yeah. Yes. Nowadays, nowadays the, the managers and the, the decision makers who are related mm. business businesses mm. are converging online or making mm. confer video conferencing to make decisions mm. and other aspects relating to the businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm. Very good. Did you see the presidents talking when they had, uh, uh, you know, Commonwealth meeting or this meeting of the East African states uh, heads? They were virtual, isn't it? Yeah. And even yesterday, yesterday they were launching Wezo Fund, were launching what they call their, um, Wezo are launching their strategic plan, and it was virtual. So all this is actually business to business. Now, new model of doing things. People use MPS to pay. Yes, it's good. Bogo. Yeah. So all these things, as you see, the changing uh, environment has brought in the and you can see more can be transacted online than actually physical movement. Yeah, let's see some here. Use of electronically enabled gadget to log in the employees' attendance register instead of the manual. Right. Yeah. Banks offering mobile banking to their clients uh, makes the transaction easier for them. Yeah. Mobile bank is also there. Yes. It has been there before. It's much more if you need cash. But now, do you see we are moving towards cashless society? In Rwanda, I'm told, in Rwanda, Hakuna Kushika Pesa. No carrying currency on you because they see that as one of the fastest ways Corona is moving. Change, you get his pocket change, and somebody else who may have touched somewhere else where the virus is, is uh, touching on those coins or notes, and you put them in your pocket, you go and use them, you the same hands, you have not washed them clearly, you touch your face, and there you are. So what Rwanda has done is cashless. You have a card you use. I did not got the details, but you have a card or mobile money. So we are moving towards cashless approach. The model is no more holding cash. And in fact, what's happening? Money institutions now say pay by M pesa or pay bill. That's what now modern organizations are doing today. And can you see that as going to, to do tomorrow? Yes, we are going that direction. The coins are going to go. There is no more minting of money. Yeah. That saves the government minting money. Yeah. Yes, Jacqueline. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Brian Omondi, I've not heard you today. You sometimes talk of Brian Omondi. What about Chemgeno? There are some of you, I need to hear your voices, guys. Hear your voice a little bit. Eunice Maingi. Eunice? Felistas Bogo? Josephine Maina? Kainan Katikazi? Where are you? Huh? Katula Mahreth, Kimani Mungai, and Lantana, Lantana Doris. Even Mafumo, Mafumbo, yes, Shelmith. I want to hear you guys. This is the last class, formal class you're having with Malimu. We'll be having, of course, a revision session. But you say we need to hear your voice, guys. Mwasa Mothoki, Mutuku Caroline, Mambia Paris, Naomi, Chumba. We need to hear you. Fidel is Negwa. Nelly Sinja, huh? Nguthi, Nguthi Olivia. Yes, Jacqueline? Is that Jacqueline? Mm, they come to my industry. Yes? People have, have changed. Uh, nowadays, the routine uh, process of, of, uh, of food delivery in the and it's yes. been done even in the retail sector. You can see it as kids, my vast. Nowadays, they, they, you can order online, then they, 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 they deliver in your doorstep. Yes. Right. Yeah. Delivery is coming online. People deliver. No more are you, and then you pay by M-Pesa or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. So, so you see what's happening is there's a lot of change in terms of now the trends that are happening. And many of them touch on strategic issues because a decision to be made by the company to have a policy that we don't receive cash now, we are receiving now whatever payment, electronic payments, and so on so forth. So most of you are there today, business to business, customer to business, and business to customer. 
All these things are things that we're seeing happening today in this day and age. And they're going to accelerate, by the way, in the future. In the future, you are going to see a lot of this. We might go the Rwanda way and the, where money is no longer being a currency you carry around, no? Money is in your wallet. You carry in your wallet, you transfer, you you you, you transact, and you have an account. And PESA have come also in a way of managing your, 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 your finances. SMEs and others. It's a new trend whereby they want to register and uh, your money is, uh, is actually uh, managed for, for you and so on. So that's what we see happening. Now, we move to collaborative economy. That's what's happening also in terms of the trend, collaboration. Networking collaboration is going to be a key thing uh, in, the, uh, in the now and the future. The ways individuals consume, contribute, and participate are changing and has led to new ways of thinking about business exchange value and community collaboration thinking of business exchange value and community the connected society connected society look at that connected society has changed not only behavior but also fundamentals of virtually virtually every organization this trend is about people connecting with each other with products and services and so on we talked about we just talked about a lot of this that the poor goods are product uh, are sent to you directly through now you know the delivery company is different the one manufacturing is different, so you do that. And that's what's happening even today. Even me, when I order some products, hardware, for example, I call the, the vendor, the person selling the hardware. I need these my parties, those nails, whatever, whatever, how many kilos, blah, blah, blah. you tell me this is the amount. I pay by M-Pesa, and then they get a courier from out there, get one of the, the picky pickies or the fellows the border border. You know, the border border is called. He, he packs those materials. He delivers them at my doorstep. I pay his transport. Interesting. I no longer have to walk there. The bank, as I said, I can get money into my account, into my M-Pesa, and do that. So you see what's happening here is it's a lot of collaboration also there. Because the, 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 the transporter is available, the vendor is there, and the consumer is on the other end. And these things are moving. That's what is going to be happening. The connected societies change completely. Our behavior is different. People want a purpose and study. People want a purpose, and studies have shown that millennials now that's another new one eh? i was expecting people to talk about millennials the new age not new age aside but the e workers the millennials individuals born between 1980 and 2000 possess a desire of something other than just profit yeah most workers today are more especially the younger generation like yourself you get to a job you don't longer tra work traditional like some of us used to do as a graduate you want to experiment you want to do things you want to be given challenging tasks that's managing now the employees. That's what I was looking at when I was looking at uh, personnel or human resource. Now here, collaboration means work, people working together. Even institutions like universities. I said I'll mention some of your university. Currently, we are working on, most universities are working on collaborative approach. We don't compete, but we collaborate. What are areas of our strength? What are your areas of strength? Through benchmarking, we can identify those. And once we identify areas of strength and weakness for each one of us, then what we do is we collaborate. We do a collabo. We work together. Collabo basically is in music. Eh? You hear people talking about a collabo. You know, even here now in this in, in industry, it's collaboration. We no longer compete. We work together. You are strong in transportation. Go ahead and do that. We'll give you that business of transportation our products to various customers across. Or you are strong in manufacturing this product. We are strong in manufacturing this. We we'll manufacture the parts and you manufacture the whole product. You assemble the product. So it's so all that collaboration. In university, we are doing the same thing. We are moving towards collaboration. In the, there's a lot of collaboration research, of course, strength from another university, researchers from there, and researchers from University A and B, and they work together, put together a proposal, joint bidding for funding, get the funding, they carry out research, all is win-win. Funds for the, each university, funds for the researchers, and everybody's happy, they go home. And I mean, they continue their business. So collaboration is there. In research, doing research, in teaching, even teaching. We are looking at uh, using resources rather than hiring a whole line of, uh, of professors in all areas as a small university. The other university is the same thing. Why don't we say this? You are strong in economics, we are strong in business, we exchange. Anybody, if you are teaching accounting, we'll have our faculty teaching your students for accounting. And when you are strong in economics, you'll have a, your faculty coming to teach our students economics. And we do that. You pay the salary of your employees, we pay hours, the hours are the same, so you collaborate or do whatever arrangements. Again, that's happening. We do this in supervision, by the way, when you supervise graduate students. When you come to graduate, when you do your research, we supervise. 
we get supervisors from different universities. They look at the same student, they supervise that student, and uh, they join the supervision means it's strengthening the student's research process. And at the end of the day, the student's better informed, learn, than uh, if he was just supervised by his one supervisor. Collaboration is there. Research, uh, in, in use of resources, uh, resources also, coaches, we are better coaches than we do in this area, and also we are better in this area. We exchange. All this collaboration and exchange is there. Companies are doing the same. Countries are doing the same. They sign bilateral agreements. So the way individuals consume, yeah, the connected society brings in the question of collaborating. People want a purpose and studies show that millennials, now, going to personnel, you know, see, realize that you cannot employ all experts. You can employ, employ some experts in another area, the other person, uh, the other institution, in another area, and you can always exchange or use the resources jointly. That's what we talk about collaboration economy, working together towards achieving our goals and win win. We talk about win win. E business strategy, reflection on this. This is an area that's very common to all of us. We know about e business. E business is what we've been talking about e banking, e money, e marketing, e procurement, all those e HR. Yeah. Strategy has taught subject uh, colleges and universities. You talk about the one, it's been much, is, is, this is an area that's coming in, doing electronic, electronic learning, electronic business, electronic activities. Modern organizations are under increasing pressure from stakeholders to find new ways to compete effectively, yeah? In dynamic markets and so on. What is happening is, is now across the globe there's e-business, e-commerce all electronic go to the, the catalog identify the products first of all search world web who is manufacturing these products who are the top manufacturers in this product in the, in the in the country or globally you know you search for them address is there communicate with them do transaction with them and people freely work so you can do that those transactions on the e-platform that's what is happening even today in ordering parts and vehicles from outside Kenya. You can see people buying cars from Japan. It's e-business. Go to their catalog. Search first of all, you want a Toyota with your Camry, which is the latest Toyota Camry. Okay? You search Toyota Camry. There it is. Manufacturers are these. Now, are there used cars, Toyota Camry? Yes, these are companies dealing with them. Where are they? They're located in the Hokkaido or Hokkaido or Tokyo or whatever. Because you have to get from original from Japan, not Dubai. Buy the second board. Yeah. Okay, so you're buying from Japan. All right. Which company? This company, ABC. And what are the terms? Yes, they'll uh, ship for you. How many are in store? Yeah, we have three of them. And the latest, you know, used cars, but latest models. This one has no dent. You can see, you can check. This one has a, an accident. I bought, um, they will tell you the truth. That's what this, a lot of uh, truth is talked about in business. Most of it, anyway. You must be honest and you do it. Trust, trust. Yeah. So this vehicle has a small dent here, that vehicle had no problem, the owner just sold it, and so we are selling it at this price. These are our terms. Again, you can be able to identify, you want to buy this and select, yes, mode of payment, they'll give you the terms there, you pay very 100% uh, before shipment, this is how you wire the money, wire the money, this is a guarantee, and we'll ship the documents, and the vehicle will be in Mombasa, free on board, in terms used in the international trade, eh? FOB, or cost insurance free CIS and CIF in Mombasa. So three weeks time, we're shipping it and you can follow it. This vehicle has been shipped using uh, Hokkaido Airlines or another airline, Hokkaido Seafarers or Hokkaido uh, uh, ship or Mitchell Court ship. This day is leaving this port and it will arrive in Mombasa this time. And you can track it as it comes. Wow, thank God for e-business, eh? Very interesting. Even it's very interesting. So within three weeks, your vehicle is there. You pass, you're going to check, yes, your vehicle is there. Go and clear at the ports. Why are you going to drive Kariyako Camry? Interesting e-business. The bank has transferred the money. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you've given an okay, that happens. So we talk about e-business in many new ways. Drugs, the same thing, whatever parts. Whatever you need, you can order. The other day I was ordering some drug for my wife and uh, it was from the US. It's just, uh, you know, there are drugs that are, you can't buy directly over the counter and there are new drugs. And we pay the money and the drugs are delivered. These are things that happen.
all the time in terms of e-business. It's accelerated. And that means new, new skills are required. New skills from both sides. Yeah? New skills from the vendor side, new skills from the buyer side, and new, and new technologies that are coming in. And who are benefiting from here? It's a win-win situation. The money is wired. The shipping company, the processing, those ones who are doing the, pro, the processing and the clearing, forwarding and clearing, everybody's winning. And it's seamless in this case. Technology, you can track, tracking system. IT guys, you know, tracking system. They know the ship left Yokohama midnight Japanese time. That's 1 a.m. Japanese time. It has passed, it's now in uh, India, just passing by India, you know, the ocean, in you know, the big ocean. Then it's reporting, docking where? Somewhere United Emirates, because they have to follow. They don't just come directly. They have to follow the routes that they follow, you know, of loading some stuff there, picking some, all the way now, Mombasa. It will be in Mombasa tomorrow. You can track. Again, everybody's here is win-win. We look at new approach, so e-business. As we go along, yeah. And uh, look at digital strategy as one of those new approaches in terms of new trends. Digital is here, as we see. Do you normal? <clears throat> do the norm, no, new normal post financial recession? That is the new normal. But the new normal here is we look at post COVID. Eh? Organization need to evolve. This evolvement of organizations. Two way communication flow empowers a new approach. Digital is being digital is no longer merely part of the enterprise. It is should now be fully integrated in the system. Yes. E digital te technology is here to stay. That's why we are having digital school in delivering learning. So it's no longer a, a place for the few companies that have a choice, but every organization, including individuals, have to go digital. Even today, to apply for your passport, you can do digital. To apply for your birth certificate, digital. To apply for any documentation from the government or anything, digital. Even jobs are digital. And then what do you do? You, you scan documents. The other day, I was asked to, to send my certificate. They want my signature. I said, now, what do I do? Signature now. I said, no, easy. The document is here. We scan it. You sign it on that end, and you scan it and send it back to us. Very simple. In less than um, uh, five minutes, I had done that. Yeah? Got it, printed it, signed it, scanned it, and sent it to them. So you can see digital technology is here in a big way. Is the technology we talk about. That it is making a great difference. You had a spare part. In fact, that same place, there was a person who was ordering a, a specific unique part for a vehicle. And some of these imported vehicles have their own uniqueness. So the spare parts are not available locally. So the fellow was trying to get this in Mombasa. And they told him, can you send us a, a sample? He said, I don't have the sample. It will take time for the sample to reach you. Mm -hmm. So what do you do is take a picture of the document or drawings, take a picture from the, normally most of these vehicles have a service book that have nuts and bolts and has specific pictures that they show. So take a photocopy of that, uh, do what they call is uh, scan it and send it to us. And we'll check in our stores and find if it's available, then we ship it the next minute. That's what he was doing. You can see what we mean here by digital technology. Even, even uh, uh, medical. Now, if you are looking, seeking for admission, like those ones who are going to India, now it has stopped to India. We are now doing a lot of treatment at home here. You know, my son was going to India for treatment. Uh, this is kidney problem. And uh, the doctors there said, look, we can't, you, we can't allow you to come, but we need to get a documentation from your doctor there. Scan, you know, the x-rays, the results, uh, the tests they have done, send them to us. Then, of course, they had to take those results, scan them, and send them. On the other side, they received them, they looked at them and said, yes, it's a case of a straightforward operation. We do this kind of operations. This is what it will cost you. Make a decision. We are coming. We book you in. That's what exactly what happened last year. Booked in, they travel. Uh, the, the doctors are confirmed, they did the operation, they cooperated, came back home. Healthy young man, yeah, continuing with life. But you see, so the question of digitalization has become so real today. That is a way of life. 
That's what it means. So new technology comes in, a new knowledge. Knowledge workers are required. And what does it mean? Even our training schools, our universities should be training people on these new technologies or else we may have the issues. Can we have, give examples? Can you provide? Can you provide at least one example of digitalization in business, digitalization in business. Provide digitalization business. I want to ask, yes, members, don't go to sleep. Oh, yeah, I hope you're still here with me. Can we give you some examples of digitalization? Provide at least one example of digitalization, digitalization say, in business. Yes, Jacqueline? I would say, yes, like now uh, the person who is in China, yes, and the person who is in Kenya can we can do yeah. transaction immediately. The goods can be sent you. You, you can use Dub Shield. You can yes. use Western Express. Yes. You can use that's so many. You you can use Posta, Kuna e, mm -hmm. e Posta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. deliver the good and then the, the, the amount is paid. The cash is paid to the person in China. It has made okay. it it's now easier, yeah. So digitalization has taken up in the financial sector very well, eh? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Rosendop? Uh, E-procurement through e-warehousing. Mm -hmm. uh, whereby you don't really need to have a warehouse. Uh, you get another warehouse, but it's electronically controlled, whereby you can see what's getting out and in, thereby it's uh, known as e-warehousing, and it's a new trend mm -hmm. in uh, procurement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So e-warehousing, you don't have to see the documents. You don't have to touch the documents physically. Okay, very interesting. Any others? Yes, I see some of you have typed something here. Okay, okay, okay. I see here Brian, Brian Omoni, online business platforms as Jumia. Yes, exactly. That's digital. Jumia. You can order anything through Jumia. And you can get it uh, as long as uh, you pay, you have identified and you pay. And uh, yeah, anything else? Members, digital strategy. This is strategy that the firms are doing as a new trend of doing business. Mm -hmm. Like you'd say in transport sector. Yes. You don't have to go all the way, all the long way. Like now you're looking for a taxi, you walk very long distance. Nowadays mm -hmm. you just have to have to download the app and yep. then you call for the for the cabs where you are. So that yeah, yeah, it is it is Good. now easier. Excellent. You're talking about uh, Uber. You yes. know, Uber changed the thinking completely, yeah. Yeah. In, in, instead of calling by phone. Which was one of the uh, one of the I can say steps. We now can download the Uber, key in taxi. I am here. I'm going there, and they they, they you get the response instantly saying, "Look, the taxi is available. It is three minutes away. It will cost you nine hundred shillings or six hundred shillings. Do you want to order or not?" And then you order, and the taxi will be there. The fellow will call you. So and so, I am here at the gate. Please, are you so and so? You are going to jump? Yes. And you see digitalization. Okay, I can see some comments here from members here. Yes, Ipale e marketing where platforms like Global Internet Fortune have uh, payable blocks for advertisements. Amazon, yes, Mafumbo Shelmi, yes, Amazon is doing that. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I see here Musa Mud. Okay. One can check in a home at home in traveling by air instead of going to the airport and get in queue. Yes, interesting. That's actually digitalized. Very interesting one. That you can select. You go to your platform. You check which airline goes to which city. Uh, what the what are the various airlines? What are their prices? Is there a flight that day? What will it cost for the lower the economy? And so on. you can go ahead and book a seat and pay and uh, even check in. Yeah, very interesting. Checking is very interesting when you go to the airport and you queue up. But then you got to check in, you just drop your bag. If you have a bag, just go, march in. Of course, security is there, security, personal security, check you, blah, blah, blah. Then you check in at the right time, where you are. 
very interesting. You don't have to move far. Yeah, it's a very interesting. Uh -huh. uh, we can check in at home traveling, even by bus these days. Eh? And buses are gone that direction. Eh? Like people daily paper, we have gone digital. Yeah, people's daily. It's digital. Instead of getting a copy from the vendors, one can just get an app and read the daily online. Very interesting. Hmm. A customer is able to order goods and services, yes, through online, right? In Palais, under transport, we have what? Eh? Under transport, deliver door to door. All this is digital. So we look at companies now offering themselves must think strategically. They need the, uh, the software, they need the technology, they need the equipment, and they need the right people who are actually the human resource, as we can see there. And then, of course, it happens. Yes, Rory, you want to say something, Richard Rory? Richard Rory. Yeah, right. I know I'm yes, good. I'm good. Yeah. You are good. Can you contribute something, Rory? Yeah, you are good. But can you tell us something about digital strategy? Yes, Rory. Uh, like for example, I can give an yeah. example. Like, okay, it's not in Kenya. It's, yeah, it's go ahead. found in Britain, like, for example, my way, uh, uh, which uh, helps in online shopping, yeah. Yes. Online shopping. Online shopping. Yeah, my way. Good. It, my yes. Way. Yes. Fred? Yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned the Google Maps there, which, which has made the direction or the guys so easy, transportation so easy whereby you need not to go and ask somebody if, when you are lost somewhere. So you just, if you have a smartphone, you just open and you click the address of the place that you want to go and it gives you the yeah. right direction where there is no congestion. Okay. Excellent. That's an excellent. You know, that has transformed the way things are done. You remember in high school, you did map reading. You remember? If you did geography at all, you did map reading. Chris, did you read, do map reading? Lokozi? Yes. Yes, Fred, did you read map reading? Did you do geography? Yes. What was the purpose of map reading? It was for giving you direction and location of areas that you want to be in. Exactly. And during during about even now but during the 60s 70s and 80s there were street maps sold in bookshops if you are a visitor let's say in nairobi you would get a street map for nairobi although they didn't do all whole cities because the cities are small so you get a street map for nairobi and you could go there and say i am here at the hilton and i'm going to this other place called where hilton i'm going to let's say Maliman locals and i'm at the hilton so you can see now at the Hilton, that's where you are. They would also indicate the bus numbers and so on. Overseas, that's what we used to do as students. We used those maps very well because you are in a strange city. You don't know that much about the geography of the place. So you read you are, you, maps are very important. You will see where you are and you can see how do I move from this point to that point. Then the alternatives, there's also taxi. You can take taxi. I remember one time when London, uh, the, we were coming home and we were dropped in London by our host because we we're just attending the conference and we we had maps so we had a map we said now we are here we are here in central london and we are going to heathrow airport how do we go we looked at the map and we saw where we were we are standing actually next to the, the, the railway station underground train the tubes underground train so he said one alternative is to go underground and get the train and that train it shows a line and it tells you how long it will take and times or we can take a taxi, taxi number, this is available here. And taxi will take a shorter time. So we opted to go by taxi. You know, a map was showing us. So map reading. Now we have gone digital. Interesting. We no longer have those maps being sold in the, in the bookshops. I mean, if they are there, they're not being created much anyway these days. Because you can go to Google Map. When you go to Google Map, it tells you it's real. In life, it tells you you are here at this point. Where do you want to go? In the gates and tells you how to get there either by walking or by whatever other means it will tell you that very and as you will tell you how long you how, how uh, you've taken how long how many minutes more that kind of thing so digital thank you very much palais that's a very interesting one because it goes back to map reading they still do map reading by the way in school because they help you to see direction and so on 
Okay, uh, Felicitas said the goods can also be delivered in the customer's door. Yes, GPS system. Yes, GPS tells you where you are and uh, you are 35 many things, real life and so on. Even what we do now with tracking, you know, the car tracking. I thought somebody would have said that. The car tracking actually uses the GPS, whereby you fit a gadget on the vehicle and then you monitor. Even these trucks now, whereby you know, trucks between Mombasa all the way to Kampala or beyond, they, these drivers, uh, these honest drivers, used to sell fuel on the way, siphoning of the fuel from the trucks. It was illegal. And so the owner can track this and find out how long the truck remained standard at the D and what was the driver doing. And they can tell you because it also tells you how much fuel is in the tank, how many kilometers it covered. So you can easily tell what's happening. And then you can track it. It was in Salga. It was Salga this time that day. Where did the driver spend time? It takes one hour from Tito, uh, one day from Tito to Salga. Or is in Malaba, stuck in the jam because of COVID-19 certificates. How long did it take? So tracking very easily, digital. Members, it's everything, including your own body, your geography of your body. You can do digital mapping of your body. You know, that's what doctors use by the way. And even telemedicine, that's where you are. Telemedicine, you can stand before a gadget there and the doctor who is away, many miles away, can say, yeah, I'm seeing the circulation of your blood. There's a problem in your maybe lungs or there's a problem here. I can tell, yes, what do you need to do in your surgery, urgent surgery, and you travel to this place. Oh, these are the medication which you require to buy. Yeah, they give you a prescription. Go to the nearest pharmacist uh, and you, you buy the medicine there. You are many miles away digitalization they have digitalized if so digitalization is something that is new in business companies that are in this area and so on and so forth all right let's move on another strategy coming in here the new yeah, very quickly uh, 17 17 17 hmm. i'll stay here let's take a little time learn about it yeah sharing again here yes 17 we are here and we're talking of internet of things i think we mentioned we spent time on this last time whereby we talked about internet of things and we said internet of things what it does is um really internet of things sorry internet of things uh suggests that things are interconnected the term of things being coined by kevin ashton refers to uh okay uh, refers to uh, 1999, its true potential has yet to be explored. The relatively new, new, new IoT refers to interconnection of every object which are equipped with, with intelligence. In terms of, you are talking of the Bluetooth and others, where you get things, you can connect things, doors connected, whatever you can connect every, and remotely sense, see things happen in your house. Even when you are uh, many miles away, you can see what's happening in your house. Yeah? Somebody had, uh, was having that technology. He said now that you can open your doors, close your doors, but things are interconnected. We discussed this last uh, in the last class. I don't want to spend much time on this, but I want to move on. And other examples have been given by members here. The drone industry is also booming as they are being bought in large numbers on the delivery of food and medicine. Yeah. On your Simon, excellent. Textbook and novel vendors have also gone digital. Yeah, they have gone that textbooks and so on, the Kindle and others. You now buy only on Kindle or whatever, use those. So you don't have to physically buy things and so on. So the drone industry, this is a very interesting industry that I really wanted to mention, that today the drones are there. And you are licensed, this country, you know, the legislature, like, the law has been behind this technology. Many times the law is behind. Why is it behind? Because the researchers they, they, uh, are way ahead Technology is running ahead of the laws. The laws are being made after, you know, because it's thinking now is faster than the legislators are making laws. So drone technology is there. It's being used today. You can, uh, students are making this. In fact, Jomo Kenyatta, Dead and Kibat students are making drones, and doing a lot of stuff, delivery of food, delivery of medicine, uh, doing spying also, the intelligence. Drones are being used by the American Army and other armies for many years. Doing this thing, sending just a, a, a man bird flying. You think it's a bird, yet it's taking pictures of what's happening on the ground. I believe even during the crashes, they could have done that if the technology was applied. 
clashes where you could see what's happening. Even today, the clashes that have been happening in uh, Dakuru, very sad. We use drone technology. You see, uh, you see what's happening, which people are moving where, and you can easily take pictures which are real time and send their troops, send their soldiers, send their policemen to arrest the situation. This can't can happen without uh, doing much. So drone technology is very, very good. So in terms of things, I think I won't want to spend time there because last time we did do that and we have a lot of write-up we send you. We also send you much about write-up. Strategic thinking is a new area. Strategic thinking, as we said, strategic thinking is a process that defines the manner which people think about, assess, view, create, and create the future for themselves and others. It's a way we look at things. This is strategic thinking and is akin to critical thinking. Traditional thinking used to look at what is. Strategic thinking it looks at what it will be. We may ask the questions. It's an extremely effective and valuable tool when you look at strategic thinking. That's why you have think tanks. You appoint people in an organization to begin envisioning what the future looks like for our organization. Their time is to be always looking at models and scenarios of the future, what's going to be happening. Universities are doing that right now, sitting and looking at how are we going to be doing in terms of our offering of services and what we do to our clients now and the future. What are the best scenarios? Come January, we may not open. What happens? How do we want to manage our classes? The larger numbers are coming in. Many universities like public universities are going to lose students because they are not, they are behind, some of them. They are behind the technology and parents who don't need their children to transfer. Although transfer window is ending uh, end of this month eh, for those first years eh, who are uh, moving in and so on. Yeah, many parents are going to transfer their kids up and down because they don't want to see they have their kids at home uh, without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, there were things of September, September has been moved to January. Who knows, January may be moved to 2022 if this pandemic continues. So we're talking of people who are looking at the future. What will happen? What equipment we require? You know, the airlines now have changed. They're looking at, look, now we open the skies. They have been opened, traveling across the globe. We need, uh, I mean, airlines are moving. What do we do to make sure that we carry passengers that are COVID-free? You know, they need certificates. They need to be, to be, to be checked. They need to be sanitized. So airlines will actually be fitted with sanitizers automated sanitizers in the cabin whereby as you see there you know people in the cabin you are actually confined in one space if you are traveling many miles you are many hours together in the in the cabin what happens you know the certificate are given for 12 hours yeah 24 the certificate normally for 14 days but what happens somebody can still develop these things while traveling uh the complications so they must fumigate they must develop configure the plan such that spacing first of all you know the thinking of so this thinking, we must have our plans that are different in future. The configuration of the cabin, the room, even these matatus, these vehicles transport, they have to find a way. This, this is temporary distancing and having chairs, but in future, if it remains, they may have to remove those chairs. New vehicles may be coming up with reconfigured seating, whereby each one is sitting in your own room, small kind of enclosure. As you get the bus, you have your own enclosure, which is a meter apart from the other ones. Very interesting. I'm sure people will travel with that one. Yeah, where you have your own enclosure, you're not mixing with the people. You are not breathing. The, you are breathing the same air, but you have your window and you have your space. And there are glasses, maybe glass windows, panels that are dividing the city, so that you are actually sitting in your own space. And the people go for that. That's exactly what's going to be happening. So we think about strategic thinking. What is happening in the think tanks of manufacturers of products, of equipment, and so on and so forth. Who talked about these uh, automated sanitizers? I went to the, one of the institutions yesterday, it was the bank, and I was surprised. They have automated what? Sanitizers. You just put your hand there, and the chemical, I mean, the, the liquid just flows by itself, by sensor. All these things, you're talking about strategic thinking. And this is coming from think tanks of people saying, look, what is the best way of managing ourselves and managing the situations? What is the new normal? And the new normal is happening requires strategic thinking for all organizations. You know, effective and valuable tools, strategic thinking is defined as a mental processes applied to individuals or in the context of achieving success in a game, in a game or an endeavor, other endeavor. As a cognitive activity, it produces thought. People think through. Even those in games, football, for example, the players, 
the bench, the, the captain, the, the captains, and the yeah, the captains have to think, and the coaches. They know this this team is more is tougher than our team in the front line and in the back. For example, they have strong back. How do we break in and score many goals? You know, the strategic thing that goes into do so that we come up with a plan that we'll have to align our players based on their strength and the weaknesses of the the other the other the other team so that we can win you see strategic thinking all this goes into thinking a small incident last week uh, we were burying uh ben Chipche, one of the runners uh, one of the legendary runners this country who brought the silver goal luckily in the, the, the common games brought three golf gold medals same one day he won five thousand steeple chairs and another one fifteen hundred i think in a scratch church new zealand yeah he done right now when we were in the Olympics in Mexico, 1968, they thought with Kipchoge, they had to strategize. How do we win? This Jim Ryan, who became the senator and became a senior leader in the US now, is an old man now. How do we beat this guy? Because everybody's predicting he's winning. They can to do strategic thinking. How do we do it? Now, Ben Kipchoge, what you do is run fastest in the 1500 meters. Eh? That's what Kipchoge got the goal, the first goal. No, that's breaking through. So they had to do strategic thinking. How do we beat this man called Ryan? Everybody is saying he's the one. He's anyway. He's a walkover. Now these guys, <laughs> these guys planned. How do they plan? They started with studying the running. And when you start the running, what you do is Ben will burn this guy out by running the fastest at the beginning. So that Jim Ryan will be running faster, faster, burning himself. And then Chipcho, uh, not Chipcho, but uh, now Keino, will run from behind and outpace. That's exactly what they did. And it shook the whole world of athletics. The whole of the Olympics was shocked. Jim Ryan is defeated. He got silver. He was so dejected. And the paper last week, I think he wrote something that I forgave Ben Chipcho. Chipcho, of course, was, uh, passed on and he was buried the other day, legendary Lana. So, I mean, strategic thinking goes into all these things so there are many examples of strategic thinking and uh, as we go along i want to ask you an example of strategic thinking huh? give an example of strategic thinking Oop, strategic thinking at a company a manufacturing company so they're thinking that uh, that what that uh, Tuskegee supermarkets, Tuskegee is supermarket needs engaging to avoid. The pitfalls that Nakumat Nakumat fell in. Hmm. Those Nakumat and those which other one? The pitfalls. Nakumat and Uchumi. And Uchumi. Fell in. Give an example of strategic thinking that Tuskegee's supermarket needs to engage in to avoid the pitfalls that Nakuma and Uchumi fell in. By the way, for information, when you go to Tuskegee's now, although it's not open secret, now it looks like it was in the papers actually the other day. And it was also a commentary that was made. It was actually in the papers. One was, I was analyzing in one of the papers that what is ailing Kenya in retail industry? Nakumat went down, Uchumi went down, and now Tuskis is just in that direction. Not gone, but it's going in that direction. What ails Kenyan supermarkets? Whereas overseas, uh, supermarkets operate from outside like Carrefour uh, and others, Target, they're doing very well in this country. What is ailing our companies? Now, this is the idea of strategic thinking. So what do you think, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen? Can you give us some views about this? Let me read or hear, you know? Let me read or hear. Mm. 
Can I hear or read from you guys? Give examples, an example of strategic thinking that Taski supermarket needs to engage in to avoid the pitfalls that Nakomat and Uchumi supermarkets fell in. You are a managers, and tomorrow you'll be hired. In fact, they can Taskis might say, yeah, you have just finished a degree at, at, uh, at, uh, at ZTEC University. Uh, we are looking for people like yourselves to come and tell us, to help us to get not fall into this. You know, how do you go about this? This is a very interesting question, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, strategic management. Tell us something. You have given me an opportunity. Mm. Yes. Members, yes. I see some of you locked out earlier. We were about 40. Earlier, but I see 30, 30 of you. But nevertheless, we are soldiering on. We're just about, guys. Yeah. Yes. Let's get give an example of strategic thinking. The task is for market. And so the thing you said defines a manner in which people think about, assess, view, and create the future. You are creating the future for taskies. What kind of future can you create? I hope you know all these supermarkets, you guys. Talk about taskies. Common, it's almost in every town except small, small towns. We knew we knew Chumi was everywhere. Now Chumi is not much there. Yeah. Nakumat was doing very well. Where are they? Higher. Brian Omondi was the first one to throw the first shot. Carry out benchmarking on the strategies which they must use to run their operations. Yes, benchmarking. Benchmarking with the successful ones. Like carry four, uh -huh. like uh, Target and others, the supermarkets that are doing very well. Mm -hmm. Yes, carry out benchmarking. When you are in area, there are a few others there, supermarkets that are doing very well, the, the international companies. Like this one that is, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. to my uh, to me, to my nose, one of them. The day they match with another. What do you think? Can you give us yes, Roston Dobanjiru? Uh, I also think yeah. that they should ensure the management is strong because the management is the backbone of the success of a company. Therefore, mm -hmm. the management is together that any kind of communication or any decision they make, everyone is mm -hmm. inclusive. It means that uh, the company will be able to stand strong and it will excel. And another strategy, they should ensure that their customer is key uh, mm -hmm. and their suppliers are also paid in time because when they pay their suppliers well, this mm -hmm. ensures that they will never run out of stock. That, mm -hmm. Those are the two key strategies that can help them stand strong. Okay. Right. Yeah, if I got paraphrase that, thank you very much, Rostendorp. It's paraphrase that is leadership and teamwork looking at the employees the teamwork as management don't just sit and over the tower and say we are the managers you know you are the workers down there they must come down and look at how best can we work to be able to rethink the management strategy rethink about management think about payments finances brought in the question of finances you know with suppliers bringing on board the suppliers what can we do if they owe suppliers so much what can we do to make sure that we move forward and so on. Very good. Two good points, strong points. Thank you. Alas, <coughs> Fred, Bay. Yeah. Yes. I can also I can also say it beside uh, beside yes. having a strong beside having a strong management. Yes. They can also prioritize the the views or the opinions of their suppliers. Yes. And and their consumers. Yes and having a good auditing system yes again yeah. here you have you have brought in two uncles bringing now besides suppliers get the consumers and yeah. make sure that you delight your consumers like i was in one of the shops and i asked where is this product that oh it's on the store it's coming where is this oh it's coming you know when you look at it that way you realize this organization is failing eh? i'm sorry there's an echo i don't know who's equal that yeah then of course, you bring in the customers. You bring in also the yes uh, prioritization of a number of things. Thank you, thank you, Pale. Tuvei has said something here. Uh, they should get set goals and rules on how to treat the customer well. Yeah, we are still talking about treating customers. Whereby, if something is missing, don't just tell them. Oh, we are bringing, and tomorrow the customer comes back and sort there. Onyoni, Simon. Onyoni. Uh, yes. Ap apart from the sales, the customers and suppliers. 
uh, Taskis has been involved in the rampant changing of uh, managers, and this one gives mm. the the workers mm. there the, like there's no sense of security to their job. So they should uh, try and limit the random changing of the managers to to ensure that uh, the, the the that Taskis uh, continues working efficiently. Because when the managers know that uh, from now from every now and again they'll be changed, it gives them that sense of no security for their jobs hence they cannot work properly good talking again key are the employees the managers job security is assuring them and bring them along the directors must bring them along not treat them like they can suck them they can do whatever i see let's read something from Felicia Mbogo. the task is supermarket should invest in innovations excellent innovation to produce up-to-date products and comfort customers yes thank you very much uh, for that write-up yes uh, jacqueline uh, I Jacqueline? was thinking, yes. I was thinking mm -hmm. they can also sell some of their shares yeah. so that they can solve the, is it 2 billion debt? Yeah. Yeah, I think it can work for them. Or they can also auction, there's auctioneering, yeah. it's also another alternative. They can auction, yeah. auction some of the machines Yeah. Yeah. to pay some of their debts, yeah. Okay, you're talking restructuring then a lot of restructuring to take place actually you're talking about strategic thinking eh? to survive tomorrow you might have to retract and make sure that your organization is is leaner and effective that's what it is you are now thinking like managers i can see i could hire you guys as manager tra management trainees Ongera san we can move on thank you thank you thank you guys yeah we are actually offering solutions and these are things that we like combining this past personnel now we are talking of employees here we mentioned this earlier another goal the company is going through is the organization process tries to achieve uh to bring together employees who perform related tasks in different regions and now this i had mentioned earlier like working remote working where employees are working from different locations that's a, a new area that's strategic also thinking and in terms of also the trends today that organizations are now working different regions you don't have to bring people together consultation or provide economic consultation scale again some of you are talking about consultation so that you bring instead of scattered you can come together in terms of the functions core functions are consolidated and you can also line them up in terms of reducing costs and waste uh, network analysis can reveal opportunities for highlighting best practice and so on so you are doing all that in terms of reducing uh, using personnel much more efficiently and effectively management as mentioned in an earlier part is ensuring that management is strong um logosi let's uh, hear from logosi's point here uh, proper planning uh, richard said proper planning and timing should be done in everything that entails uh, the racing taxis market yeah planning and timing and logosi says something here Carry out sort analysis to be able to pit uh, to pit more, uh, put my effort, the strength and avoid the weakness and so on. Yeah, improve operations efficiently. Employer, yeah? new technology and massive production. This production use economy of scale. Yeah, carry out a survey on customers, one day needs. Finally, carry out research on new and venture new markets. Yeah, all that are good answers in terms of helping taskies. As I said, I can I could hire some of you as my uh, management trainees when taxis. I'm sure if you apply for a job and say, look, your company, I can see where it is, but I can be able to bring in a new approach in terms of new thinking. I'm sure they might accept or they might uh, close their ears. But as I said, this is good, good points. Let's move on. And uh, so we are just about the corner around the corner innovating from the bottom yes somebody about innovation again here innovation is key thing adoption of technology has been a global phenomenon on the scale of use by user uh, impressed by emerging markets these are shown that disruptive business models occur in the extreme market conditions combined technology yeah and economic recovery we're talking about as economic recovery is now showing in some of the parts of the world high rates of growth are being recorded and companies have addressed the new models new models and imagine global players where many multinational companies are only now starting to consider this develop developing markets and the founding of technology enabled you know technology enabled innovation that's what's happening today in manufacturing and whatever so the key thing here is use of technology innovation the trends today is as the market runs those companies that are working smarter using technology are able to overcome the downturn and the move forward 
And then, of course, as we talk about challenges and issues in this case, uh, no matter what the business has always needed, uh, her adapted and so on, ingenuity. no matter what the era is, business has always needed adaptation and ingenuity to remain successful at times, and as times pass, speed of life and businesses, people are left behind faster than ever. Yeah, you're looking at issues, challenges and issues. Look at what is happening in technology today. Moving very fast. Globalization is a huge facet. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge also. It's a trend, yes, but it's a challenge. How do companies deal with this? Shipment and dealing with taking advantage of the, the technology, the globalization and technology. And sensitivity systems, you must have analysis to ensure that you catch up with what is happening. And we'll first, gentlemen, because we'll have notes on this. And the technology, today, everyone is walking around with smartphones. All of us are. 120 million times faster in NASA's combined than total computing. You know, this is a very interesting one I wanted to mention. Eh? That you see, today, everyone is walking around with a smartphone that is over 120 million times faster. That's not a small figure. The smartphones, some of us, some of you have, are 120 times, million times faster than what NASA was using in 1969. You remember 1969, landing the people on the moon and so on. Their computing capacity was, and thinking was lower, 120 times less than what it is. So today, technology, you see, we have smartphones. The speed that we technology is progressing has changed everything about life. It has. Harnessing both the direct cell opportunity for the internet and the algorithm abilities of modern manufacturing means companies can, can create can now create custom-made products like on, uh, for consumers by special order. You do things by special order. Things are faster. Manufacturing, design, design, uh, design, developing, uh, testing, and bring to the market. It's much faster to use technology. So companies that are doing this are way ahead. With all that technology comes the financial challenge of staying current with technology, staying current. Technology is changing very fast. It's like computers. When I look at the computers during my time of university like yourselves, we used to have huge computers, centralized. And we used to have what we call punch it cards. We used to punch cards. That's the technology. Punch it cards, and then these are read and deciphered by the computer. And it was challenging. Today, it's, it's, we, we do it uh, at our fingertips. We type in messages and it goes and so on. You don't have to punch cards and change them. So technology has changed very fast. And therefore, that's what it means. That one of the trends today is technology is faster. And the companies and business must run with the technology. Without owning them, but using them. Environment is another major area. That the environmental issues are actually here today. When you talk about NEMA in this country, when you talk about uh, the environmental UNEP, United Nations, which we are headquartered in Kenya, they are concerned about the environmental issues. Climate change, what has that done to businesses? Some raw materials are no longer there. They are depleted. What is happening? What are the new technologies? We talk about uh, using, uh, using uh, green energy. That's what's coming today. We're talking about effluents. We're talking about waste. The other day, I was watching a documentary on waste plastic waste in the European countries. You know the recycle this in a company in Germany. I was looking at from Britain, all these shiploads of plastics are shipped, compressed and shipped to companies in Germany, which, which converts this into new products, converts them, removes the plastics, turns it around and makes new plastics out of it. Very interesting. Here in Africa, we are behind with robots everywhere, they clog the sewage systems. We are not very keen on this. So this is what's happening for envir caring for the environment. In, 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 you, in a country like uh, Rwanda, you can't take plastics there. Plastic containers, no. I mean, plastic bags, no. And we, because the environment, we're talking about environment, and many others, and laws to change to deal with the climate change. You hear about the government evicting people from the Mau. It's not just a question of an inhumane doing it, uh, uh, occasion. Maybe the way they do it is inhumane, but what's happening today in the, in the environment is that we deplete our forests. You know, when you look at uh, the Mao forest, Kenyan forested area is below 10%, which is recommended internationally. We're about 
although now we have agriforest and so on and so forth, but basically the forested areas are less because of human habitation. And so when you see the minister, Kiriako Tabiko, and with his, taking his, uh, you know, using his uh, powers as the minister of environment, ensuring that uh, forests are kept free from human in the encroachment and so on. And what has been encouraged, they are planting trees. In fact, yesterday there was something in the papers that they want to plant 100 million trees. Is it 100? There are millions of trees they want to plant. And they are encouraging every Kenyan, wherever you are, during this rain season, wherever you come from, plant trees to green our country because we are moving towards almost a desert if we leave this to happen. And so environment is key because of climate change, because of the resources we require, we get, and so on and so forth. All this is happening. The mangroves, as I saw another documentary about even mangroves along the coast that have been destroyed. So the women who are being encouraged, uh, groups there in South Coast and even the Malindi area, encouraging and Lamu, encouraging groups there, the NGOs encouraging and the ministry, encouraging people to replant. They are doing this even around the Wasin area, replant mangrove trees and so on. And the carol, corals, and so all these dealing about the environment. Corals affect what? Corals and mangroves affect the sea, the, the, the fish production. And fish are key thing, the cost. But this documentary is saying, look, we well, a lot of food from the sea. Another program I would listen, gentlemen, is Katian Farmer. You know, that's a very interesting program. I want to encourage you as uh, managers to be watching, rather than watching those soap operas of Niger and others. Why don't you watch other things that are interesting, like farm, uh, Katie and Farmer? I'm not a promoter of that, but I watch some of the things they do. And this is what I saw the program. Very interesting program and so on. So uh, environment is key here in terms of ensuring that uh, we we, are, we live in a safe environment. Noise pollution and so on. We don't have time to spend time on that. Then, of course, the political wings, yeah, political environment. That's another change that's happening in terms of trends. Uh, politics must always adapt to times. Today's politician scene is chaotic as it is as we never. Well, uh, all times it is must it's much more difficult to, to do for business to navigate the political playground while doing business. You know, you have to see what's happening in the countries before you invest there, how a company is doing, what's going to happen, like Kenya. In Kenya, every year, political things, like uh, when we have this question of uh, elections, we have had problems of people, uncertainty, even investors don't want to invest, they had to wait and see. So again, we still got volatile political environments that affect businesses. So strategic thinkers and strategically, businesses look at the next three years, Kenyans are only talking about policy policy. If it was not for the sake of this uh, COVID, which is changing a few things, many things, people would be thinking about politics, politics, politics. So again, it's we, that's not the way should, things should be. But if you are a, a corporate person, you would not uh, be, a, you would actually not bury your head in the sand, but you'll be waiting and seeing what's happening in the political scene in the country. So again, talk about political scene here. Uh, politics goes much further, though, because it controls everything. Because the policies they come up with, investment policies, for example, taxation policies, uh, employment policies, can affect you know how businesses run. And so as you think strategically, you look at the political scene. And that's why many big companies, by the way, this is another document that I was reading, mm -hmm. that many big companies, the conglomerates and uh, the multinationals, actually they invest in politics. They fund parties indirect, indirectly. They want this party to win, this leader to win, because they know the policies are going to be better than if this one wins. And they spend millions of shillings, dollars, spending money in terms of supporting a particular uh, thinking in a country. Which is so sad, eh? Sometimes they, that means you are not free. The suffrage, the people who are supposed to elect uh, leaders, are not free to elect. You will elect, yes, but the multinationals, the corporates, the huge companies that invest heavily in the country will decide who is the winner. And they say, quarter and quarter, they decide who is the winner. By the way, they would act in terms of supporting which party, which candidates, to make sure that they win so that they get their stability for their business. And including also the international community. The international committee is interested when they look at a country that is uh, elections are coming. They know it will be volatile or it will be this. They'll be interested. These countries, the Western world, will, uh, if I may use uh, quote and another quote, conspire. We want to see in Zimbabwe who are the leaders. Mugabe went yes, but who can be able to secure our interests in terms of investment? Because uh, Zimbabwe is rich in minerals and they have all the time gone to China. But can we change the thinking there a little bit? Which parties are able? This is what they do, the think tank in the Western world. They think about countries that are developing and the resources, and they find ways of influencing the politics 
of the country so that they go towards, they lean towards what is it? Russians are also there. Eastern Bloc is also looking and watching. Eh? How is it happening in Rwanda? Uh, what can we do? Uh, that kind of things. Anyway, not getting into politics, but we can do business that politics. So, interesting enough, when you talk about strategic thinking, this is what happens for those companies that are looking ahead and have invested quite a bit. They want to see what's happening and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, don't tell me who wins when and so on. I won't, but I'm just saying that's what happens in reality. Even the American politics, you see Canadian, some of those are state economies and so on. Now, global health pandemic, COVID is another one. And this one, we can't take much time on this because we know what it's doing. But it is a, it's an issue that is here today. Companies are closing, restructuring, reorganizing, and so on and so forth. This year will go down to history that it was one of the years that the whole globe was shaking. For those who be there 50 years to come or 20 years to come when the history is written, they will say, look, one of the calamities, just like we talk of the Second World War, how it devastated the whole world. You know, Japan, the America, Europe, the Allied forces, how it attacked the whole globe. Even this is a war. It's a third world war, if you may say, that is actually not said by anybody, but is said by COVID, uh, the COVID virus that has changed the way things are done globally. And so the impact of, so the impact here is businesses really, has not really come, the impact of coronavirus is being felt by all business across the world. You know, when you look at the stock exchange, they're actually collapsing. Investments are just being wiped out overnight because of this COVID-19. And leaders are now navigating broad range of interest, uh, interrelated issues that span from keeping their employees and uh, keeping customers safe, shoring up cash and liquidity, reorienting operations, navigating complicated government support programs. You see, this is what is happening now. That last bullet is what is showing what's happening. Now relief programs, funding. For how long does funding go? It will dry up because the productivity is not going on well. So these are things that I don't want to be labor, but you can read more about these things. Right? And gentlemen, and it's very interesting there. Thank you very much. A reflection question I wanted to ask here, which I wanted to ask you is that, what are some of the current trends which I will be giving you? We're giving a reflection question, but what are uh, some of the major current trends or issues, let me say issues that will affect strategic management in the next five years. Uh, locally and globally. I'll also be sending you a video, so we didn't put it here, but it will come in a video. We have it for you. It's doing that. So what are some of the major, cur major current issues that will affect strategic management in the next five years for companies in this country? Kind of what are they? Mm. I want you to think about that because we're talking of issues and issues and trends. What are some of those current issues? You can see some of your typing, and uh, as we come to wind up this class, you're typing. I want to just read a few of you, and then finally, what are your comments about this class? Finally, finally, comments about this class. Pause. What are your comments? Finally, comments on this is done. Right? Somebody talking about Jagla Moke, the state of the economy, like uh, in the interest rates are going to be happening. Mm -hmm. I see here the state of the economy, like interest does. Sir, somebody said, sir, what about what about makeup cut? Makeup cut. We did makeup cut. Where were you? You know, when you tell me makeup cut, cut one, Roston the Banjiru, we opened that. I think we opened cut one and we gave people time. If you remember, and we, it was open from midday from actually it was, uh, I think it was the whole of Saturday. So unless there are others who are talking about uh, makeup cut one, I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about uh, uh, here. 
uh, Roston, though maybe you need to be clear here about markup cut one. Uh -huh. But otherwise, technology is a current issue. Yes, technology diseases, pandemic like coronavirus, which occurs currently are globe technology is current, they are quickly changing technology. Okay, right. What about the course now? Look at what, what are your comments about this course? We have come to an end. I think what about this course? Can we get your comments? Quick comments as we close. The course and the class. Have we enjoyed? Have we learned? Have we changed? Have we become better managers? Have we been inspired to think as managers? Because we have finished the semester, we are saying congratulations. As you finish the projects, you finish and we graduate you in November. Wow. I'm of your given powers to read. So I need your comments, ladies and gentlemen, here very quickly as we close. Yeah? Because we've had a great time, I guess. Uh, for me, as you type, I've enjoyed teaching you guys. And uh, I've enjoyed meeting you online. Uh, for those of you who have been very active, Hongera Sana, keep it up, even your job place. Make sure you are active, you are there. Make sure you are a front runners. Make sure that you consider, you know you have been in a university, which is your university. Make sure that you run forward in doing this. Okay. The successful have learned a lot. Send them notes in one document. Now, they will come. I will send you what we call a manual. For Jacqueline, the notes that will come will come in a manual. We'll send you this at the end of the class. Not today, but next week. We'll send you a complete manual that touches on from lesson one all to lesson 12. Those are notes. And then if you want to look at uh, the presentations, you'll go to where? You'll go to the PowerPoint presentations. The notes are more detailed. PowerPoint, we've tried our best. You go to YouTube and you get this. Even by the end of today or tomorrow, you did this note will be on YouTube, what I'm discussing. And you can follow them. And then we send you also the manual. We send the manual to everybody. We put it down, you pick it up, a manual for everybody. Quick change in technology. Yes, uh, finally, technology is current. Richard, real disease pandemic, yes, growth and so on. This course was fantastic. Thank you very much, Richard. It was uh, suggesting, and I uh, was suggesting CAT 2 can be running from 5. Oh, you want to from 5, eh? From 5 to midnight. I can see suggestion. Yeah, we can open from 5 to midnight. That's okay. Because some of you might be places where you cannot study at night. I agree with you. If you are living with other people, you don't want to wake up people at midnight, you know. Please, please let me use this. Uh, uh, we do it. We do it from 5. And we don't want people to come back and say, I need to make up. Because that's why we wanted to have it together. Yeah. There are some who did not do the makeup cut. Where were they? Where was Katule? I wasn't about asking. Where was Katule? So let me have a mail. Send me a separate mail on that. Okay. Rosten Dab sent me separate mail. So I with successful. I've learned a lot. Send the notes. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. The course has been priceless all through. Class has livened the day and strategically it has been an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Onyoni. It was nice having you as students, good students. And I hope you come for my master's degree, the master's degree which you're offering. Eh? Yeah. You've gone out of your way to give real life examples. I have learned a lot. Thank you very much, Nelly Sinja. We can now think like managers. Thanks uh, for inter interacting with us. Felicitas, you are now a manager, not thinking, but you go out there, Kifu Ambele, I'm a manager, you know, and you prove that by doing things, managing even home, even where you stay, let them see your managerial skills. Don't wait until you go to an office, even the house you stay in, can you manage the house? Mm, people can see you, even your home, if you are staying. Let's see you are thinking differently, planning, offering suggestions, doing things and moving like a manager. Let's act like a manager as we live out there. We can now think like managers, yes. Uh, most of the unit has been of great help. Thank you very much. The course was very interesting. Thank you. It was fantastic. Kind of requesting if you hear all document you sent through emails. Yes, we'll send that. We'll see. Uh -huh. Thanks for always being there. God bless you. Uh, God bless you, Rostondo. You have also been a great help. Thank you very much. And so, uh, wish you well too. Got two, yes, uh, success internet. We can land, can't access. Yes, yes, cut two from five, five. We can't. Uh, I mean by that. We. You mean. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Well, and a lot.
want to and the students nobody can yeah that message have no send me email. I stopped. Put the there. Yes. Yes.
sorry for that. Members, are you hearing me now? Are we okay? Are we okay now? Yes. Okay? Yes, sir. Sorry for that. I think that's the problem. Now we're just finishing. Any questions in the comments? Yeah, the comments. Okay, if you are okay, I want to thank you and say the cut. We are saying five o'clock, but some of you are saying they cannot connect. Is that the question? The reason? A cut, we can begin at five and end at midnight. That's cut two. And the makeup for cut one, we can organize over the weekend where I can post it and it will be open for over six hours. Cut one. For those who never did cut one, like Atule, but they should write to me. Send email to me for those who missed. Because we had already done it. We gave time. And so we we'll need to get them tell me directly. I mean, write to me directly. So that I don't just prepare a paper for uh, one or no students. Udi, Lillian, you have something to say? Udi, Lillian? Udi? Yes, Lord. yes, what is it that you have you want to say? No, I just want to thank you so much. Karibu. Yeah, the section was wow. We enjoyed every bit of it. Asante sana, Lillian. Thank you too, Mario. Asante, you are good students, and I look forward to you success in life and writing back to university and your Malim saying we enjoyed your study, the study there and refer many students to Zitek University. Your cousins, noted. your real friends, and so on. Okay. Okay, noted. Wish you well now. Anybody else before we close? Yes, Rostand, have you gone? No, the class I'm rep? <laughs> yes, can you say one or two things quickly? Uh, first, I'm very grateful. It has been uh, a journey with you, three courses uh, with Thank you. you. Uh, your partnership has been good as well as the class. Being the class rep from year one to year four, it has been good. I've gained leadership skills and I will utilize them in my work area. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Those are the ladies, gentlemen. Anybody else among the gentlemen? Hello, among the gentlemen? Oh, they are all gone. Yeah, if they are gone, I'll want to stop there and say thank you very much. We'll send you these notes and also if some reflection questions and also we'll send you what we call uh, another video that you can see about this particular uh, topic today. Thank you and God bless you. Sunday, Sunday.